What's up, fighting game fans? Welcome to EX Saturdays, the show where we talk about the Midwest fighting game community scene and keep you up to date with all the recent fighting game news. I'm NT. I'm Ham Jams. Unfortunately, today we do not have Dynamite with us. He's feeling a little under the weather, but this week we do have our special guest, FNTR. What's up, FNTR? What's going on, man? Just, you know, hanging out. It's really rainy outside and it kind of sucks, but we're stuck in here and uh, we're going to talk about some some uh i don't know if it's like i don't know if i just want to jump into it already but i have i have some thoughts on the topic for today i have some pretty complicated thoughts about it let's not put the cart before the horse yeah you yeah get you, you a couple segue things. into it first yep. yeah got a couple things going on today so we do have a big topic that i wanted to talk about last week but we unfortunately ran out of time so we're going to be talking about it this week with fntr but first things first of course we have to talk about lko week five which was a really good week for tekken that was our first week having tekken and i commentated and man what a bracket that was i'm surprised i still have my voice it went long as hell bro <laughs> five hours Five <laughs> hours of straight tech. I, I started up my stream, streamed the Street Fighter Five tournament, ended the stream, watched a bit of another stream, came back, he was still screaming in the other room. Honestly, there was too much stuff to not be screaming about, so had to be the hype man on the mic. I was doing my job. Aren't we all? But I got to ask you guys first before I get into tech and how was your guys' brackets? Well, Christian, you, yeah, you I ran was, my I bracket. Tekken, <laughs> so Tekken, Tekken went fine. It went fine. Uh, I think we had two DQs overall. Um, but both of them were very early on in the bracket. And they both let me know. They were like, yo, uh, one was like, my daughter's sick. And then another was like, yeah, I'm, not, I'm just not going to be home. So uh, DQ me. I ain't going to be home. Other than that. Yeah, he was like, I'm not home and I'm not going to break in quarantine. Time, so. Where else are you going to be? I don't know. <laughs> but either way, uh, bracket ran like pretty that. well for the most part. What yeah, about you, Dom? I would say Street Fighter V went pretty well, all things considered. That's probably the busiest I've ever been sitting behind my desk um, because there was no additional commentator. So it was just me and the stream. And I was like, all right, let's see what we got here because. Um, this isn't exactly my expertise. This is just a game I like to watch um, at majors. Like, I love watching people play this game really, really well. But only then. So that means I'm not playing it. You know, it's like being the R Kappa of commentators right now. I, I ain't playing the game. I'm just there. Um, but other than that, like, you know, it ran real smooth. It was pretty quick. And, you know, it finally, we got shake up in results. So that was pretty cool, too. Let's see. Speaking of the results, let's go ahead and run through that. Got it pulled up. Random high fives taking it grand finals over underscore underscore. Was it three or four weeks that underscore has I been? I think it was three. Champion. Was three. Yeah, because I think Just a Kid was the first. <laughs> yeah. Just a Kid was steamrolling through. Just a Kid hasn't been here for a couple of weeks. Underscore took the throne and then random high fives scooped him out of existence. We have the Man Series in third place. Now, I unfortunately was unable to catch any other streams because I was on commentary, so I can't comment too much on the standings or how they got there. But over on the MK side, Fueled Punk coming back after a week break, taking it again over Bacon Lord, and GGA Max actually taking third place. That's good standing Market for Max. improvement for GGA Max. Nice. Yeah, I haven't seen Max do too hot in these brackets, but he finally makes a top three placement, actually taking it over Shady. Shady's first bracket, I believe, not being in top three since we started. Okay, so something I want to point out, by the way, um, something I want to poke into, MK um, has been historically really hard to run in the Chicagoland area. Like all NRS games, it has that cycle where it goes, okay, I'm in there, everybody's playing it, this game is tight. Oh, it's super dope. Oh, we passed it once, and then you never see them again. All the NRS players go into their house, and they stay there. And I guess that's the secret tech of running Mortal Kombat 11 in the Chicagoland area, is to just run the tournaments online. Because in the beginning, we had a few people for MK, but we're starting to get more and more. 
it's starting to pick up. This the, the tournament's getting more momentum. Maybe they just like playing online. Maybe that's the secret. It is gaining a lot of traction. I think when we started, there were only about 10 people. Then we got 11 people, 12-ish people. Then it was back down to like 11. But this week, we had 18 people. And let's see if I can peek any DQs real quick while I'm waiting for this to load up. I'm going to sneak back over into the grand blue side. Chatter Resurgence. I'm really glad to see. We had, I think, something like eight people last week. Not great. And then this week, we went back up to 20 players. Uh, so the classic grand finals match of... LKO, Grand Blue, Tibola and Macho. Tibola taking it over Macho. Macho only losing to Tibola, so I imagine that was a winner's finals loss, then running back into losers to yeah. losing grand finals. And then uh, Kizzercrate, who is our last week's champion, taking third place. I mean, the, at least the, res the results are consistent, you know? You're starting to see that it's starting to level out. Because I remember there was a whole bunch of people all over the place with Grand Blue, and now it's starting to get to, okay, these names are very familiar. These are the people that are always there. So uh, taking a peek at the MK bracket, it does seem there were a couple DQs, so that's unfortunate. But either way, the player number is going up, and I can only say that's a success. You know, whether there are a few DQs or not, we are seeing new faces. Field Punk is our one of our new faces, along with uh, Exo Snowman. Both the players are incredibly good. Um, Snowman making it into top three last week. Didn't make it this week, but Field Punk taking the two tournaments he's entered, he's taken both. So he's definitely got skill. So moving on to the the grand bracket of Tekken. And I, you might be able to hear it in my voice. I do feel like my voice is a little tired because I don't think I've commentated for five hours before. And it was difficult to keep up with all the matches because all of them will, I can't say all of them, but er most every single match we saw on stream was top tier, worthy of some sort of hype. But looking through the bracket, let's name a couple killers. So we had Shadow, Raziel, John Hammer, Kaiser, Glaciating, Jaime, Emily, Mazin. Like half our killers were in this bracket. Also, special, special shout outs to people like Dog Bomber, um, GDX Dev. I believe they were said they were from Ohio, made a great run. Was extremely happy to see them. Also, to where is that name? Uh, Jet Crow X3. Jet Crow X3 had to play Emily in round two and held their own pretty well, I gotta say. So, a lot of talent came out and really showed what they had to offer. But Knowing Chicago, Shadow 20Z taking it in grand finals, actually resetting the bracket and gets glaciating. Channel lost to glaciating in winners finals, brought it all the way back against uh, Emily. Emily uh, taking third place and Mason taking fourth. And like I said, every single match hard fought. There were a couple two O's, but I can't say any of the two O's were blowouts. Yeah, I would say that every time I poked my head into the stream, because I don't watch everything, you know, I um, it looked like it was going to final, final round, final game. Every time you're like, geez, dude. You, even like, if it wasn't, game. even if it wasn't, a lot of the rounds were going down to like last 15% HP. Yeah, it was, it was all very close. And it was like, it was high. It was cool. Glaciating was streaming on the side, just sucking all the viewers to his channel. I was like, all right. <laughs> all right. Yeah, no, I saw that. <laughs> uh. I, I can't say too much because Glaciating did play extremely well mm -hmm. throughout the entire tournament. Um, see, Glaciating's run, he had a bye round two against someone named Aang13. 2-0 uh, against that, going up against Jaime in quarterfinals, taking 2-0 over Jaime. Then going up against Emily in semifinals, taking it 2-1 over her. Winners finals, 3-0 over Shadow. And then losing to Shadow in grand finals, 2-3 uh, for the reset. And then 1-3 for the reset. But yeah, even so through I all... I not sound happy about it when I was like, all right, well, if you're going to you're gonna stream it, I might as well just poke it. And he got hit with... Um... He got hit with a rage drive, and he's like, oh, come on. And I'm like, yeah. Yo, we were popping off over those rage drives. <laughs> that whole set was so wild. Devil Kazuya takes him by the chin and brings him to the ground. Oh, come on. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> 
So I can highly recommend watching all of Tekken once it's placed on YouTube. Go watch through the VOD if you don't feel like waiting for YouTube because you're not going to be disappointed. I was on commentary with uh, Mike W. I'm sure most of you are familiar with that name. It was a great night, and I hope we can do that again sometime real soon. We are going to be rotating Tekken. We're going to be going back into Skullgirls. So great time to mention that Week 6 is live. If you guys want to hop into LK Week 6, now is your time. Yeah, I'm Same rules sure, as uh, always. It's it's like if, if uh, Seth did mess with his commands, or actually if the commands haven't been messed with from the previous night, you can probably type in LK06, exclamation point LK06, and get that up. I highly recommend joining the tournaments because it's getting better and better every single week. We're becoming more familiar with how to run brackets and more talent is coming out, which I think is the best part. We've had match arenas going for a while. Tekken got over $65 yesterday. I'm not sure what the other games are doing, but we're getting good stuff in there for our players. And uh, Christian, I know that you ran it. How was actually running Tekken? Running Tekken? It was fine. I mean, it felt it felt the same as any other game. The only issue I felt was uh, it took a little longer for certain people to get into matches with each other because Tekken Online system is not a lobby system for Tekken is not optimal. Not and optimal. It, He's being yeah. nice. That shit is ass. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so it's not ass. It's not Every uh, match we can, they we had can't to sugarcoat wait for it. This it's not, it's not ro good. rotating thing. Like what? Every so every that, single match, it's like okay, well, is this so person going to play this person? Cool. No, they didn't ready up. Okay, rotate down. Is this person going to play this person? No, rotate down. It's like a, a three-minute lead time to get the commentators out from underneath to get the two players who want to play each other on the top. That shit is trash. That is the, the worst, the worst part of it, actually, is getting them connected to each other because unlike every other fighting game, you can't just search a name and get connected to them. You have to add them to friends. So that means... Bryce, the man behind the low kick stream, had to add every single player to his account just so he can invite them for stream. You know, interestingly enough, that is something that I heard um, last week. I was listening to uh, the Boomcast, and they said specifically that you don't have to do that, but you have to do some very certain thing. And I didn't remember what that very certain thing was, but they stole the tech from the Soul Calibur boys. There's, is what um, they said. What do you call it? It's like a it's like a Steam code. It's not necessarily like a Steam link where like you can uh you like right click uh your join game and stuff. Like Skullgirls does this as well. We use this to run Skullgirls as well. It's the same system where instead of having everyone just add each other on Steam, uh you can generate a Steam link to your lobby. So that's like the easiest way to do it because you don't have to share any kind of specific information or anything. But uh I did see some of the Tekken players actually doing that system instead where they use the code and it was very easy for them to get into matches with each other. But for people who didn't understand that, and I didn't understand it either. I didn't even know that was a thing. Um, it took them a while. So some people had issues, but other people seem to have, have had it covered. So it was fine. Sounds like a system we're going to have to research for next uh, time we run Tekken because man, that took a real long time. And most of the time was, as Dom said, that having to cycle through the players like that is garbage. There should be some way just to set yourself to an away status so you don't get cycled in. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Knowing that lobby Soul system is going to go, oh, you're away. <laughs> well, you know, that means you don't want to watch the match. <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it can get real rough sometimes, but I guess this is a the best time for me to get into what I originally wanted to talk about, which, you know, we're eventually, or I should say inevitably going to shit on devs in just a second. But the big topic that I really want to talk about this week is fighting game devs and dumbing down their games for casual audiences and how it actually hurts casual audiences and veteran players both at the same time. Or does it? Tune in when Ham Jams is clearly being the devil's advocate here. I'm so, not going to do that. I completely agree. <laughs> Ham and I did talk about this a couple days ago when we were off doing something, grocery shopping maybe, because, you know, we're roommates. But uh, it's just a thing that I haven't understood since they started doing it. Uh, and it's the sense that when you add in 
user-friendly things to a fighting game that supposedly casual is supposed to be able to pick up on easier all it means is that your game isn't going to have as much depth to it so the veterans are going to hit the core of the game and run years long deep experience against new players who have no idea what's going on because they're not going to know what frame traps are they're not going to know what safe jumps are or anything like they're not going to know what strike throw mix-ups are so this they're is not gonna, I, they're sure as hell not going to know what a tick throw is yeah so this is what i want to talk about is how bad is it for new players to get into fighting games with these kinds of systems and Christian, you said you already have a lot of things you want to talk about, so go ahead and take it from here. So there's a lot of like things I've tried to consider when thinking about this kind of topic because it's a really touchy like thing for like I've tried to look at it the best from like a developer standpoint and also a player standpoint since I played these games, um, and I spend a lot of time playing games that people consider really really complicated and really like you know hard to get into, right? Like I play CF, I play Gear, I play I played a little bit of AC, um, I've played Iron Knight, I've played a bunch of different anime games now. And I've also played Tekken. Tekken was actually my breakout game uh, into the FGC, which is also a game that's considerably pretty difficult to get into if you already have a strong scene. So there's a lot of issues like regarding, obviously, the lack of good tutorials in fighting games. Uh, you can only name a few that are really, really useful and aren't overbearing or degrading in some form. Um, because you don't like want to make 50, your player 50, base right? Because like pe right? people say this all the time that like you know, well, Under Night's got a really good tutorial, but have you ever actually looked at that screen? <laughs> like, imagine being a new kid. Because like for me, like I do tutorials. I'm like, there's value in this. Mm -hmm. That screen is just a literal brick, a grid of like hundreds of separate sections of the thing. And they're like, well, now that you do this one, do this one. And now that you've done this one, do this one. It doesn't feel intuitive to jump from the one to the next. Now, if you do it all consecutively, it does go from one thing to the next pretty smoothly in ideas. But it just – it's so much data at once. And it doesn't make you feel like you're learning it rather than you're just doing it better each time. Mm -hmm. I would also so say on top of that, it probably doesn't help for the new players because they're going to see – 50 bullet points and they're going to sit there and think, man, I have to learn all 50 things just to learn how to play fighting games. Mm -hmm. It's the a lot. The answer is yes. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. The like, answer is hate, yes. hate, to, hate to break it to you, buddy, but uh, yes, you can't, you can't escape from crossing fate. You're in there once like in the beginning, you'll look at it and you'll go, well, I only need to learn the first. If you're a casual fighting game plan, you'll, you'll tell people you only need to need to know the first 20 bullet points out of 80 or something like that. And then you realize that you're casual and you're ass and you really do need to know all of those things. But those things come with time, practice, dedication, actually labbing the game, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So... Funny enough, you actually bring up a, a game that I was going to have as an example. I actually have a little list here on my phone written down. Um, and it's going over, like, games that I think did simplicity well and didn't detract from the actual quality of the game and the depth as well. Um, and then a list of games that may or may not have ruined good things in the name of simplicity. Um, mm. I think BB Tag is a really good example of a game that didn't, that did simplicity in the right way. So oftentimes when you think about games like BB or GG or anything, um, you think, you know, okay, well, these games have a lot of systems, right? There's a ton of different system mechanics that, you know, kind of aren't explained extremely well. I mean, you have Active Flow in CF, you have Blitz, you have in GG, you have uh, Tension Pulse in GG. You have a bunch of, like, little things that, like, matter, but don't actually matter at a base level. You know what I mean? At, like, the core aspects of like when you're learning when you're learning and picking up these games these things don't matter but they present it to you immediately i think bb tag does really well and not really take it doesn't take away any of those things it actually adapts them more into a more comfortable way to play a team game but what they do simplify is inputs so there is nothing else besides either down 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 inputs so two 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 and in into like a button combination or quarter circles or quarter circle backs that's it that's the entirety of bb tag that's it the only complicated thing you're going to need to learn how to do but that's only at an intermediate to high level is you have to learn how to negative edge with your assist call that's it the only thing that's the only thing that is kind of difficult but even then you only have to do it in three different in like forward uh 
back or neutral. That's it. In case we do have any casual players, can you go ahead and explain what negative edging is? So negative edge is the idea that you're when you hold a button, let's say you were to do a quarter circle and you hit the button like a, like a Hadouken or something, right? You do a quarter circle and a punch, and it does Hadouken. Well, think of it as you do the quarter circle and you hold the button, but instead of, uh, instead of pressing it, like when you do the full quarter circle, you release it instead. So there's lots of imp like character. There's certain characters in certain fighting games where, in order to do their special moves, instead of doing button presses, you do button releases, and you do them at specific intervals. So, for example, in BB Tag's case, you would do an assist call, and you would hold back, and then you would release the assist call button uh, at a certain point if you want to active switch during specific pressure. Gonna bring this up as well. Yeah, that's, uh, that's for, actually a really good. For idea. people who play Sam Show or have seen Shampo Sam Show or even played uh, Street Fighter. There's a thing known as tap, you know, turn around punch. And if you're unfamiliar with that, it means you're going to be holding down a singular button and you cannot release it because when you take your finger off of that button, that's when your your button releases. So people who play Shizumaru will hold down this button at character select. Not Yo, first, not for a second. Up. Character select. So I'm sitting here, my index finger cannot move off of this button. So in essence, you're almost charging a negative edge, if that makes sense. So quite literally, negative edge just means your move or, you know, special will come out on the button release rather than the button press. Mm -hmm. So when Shizumaru finally sees that opening where he's going to get big damage, he's not doing an input. He's releasing his finger off the button, which is mm -hmm. the negative edge. Right. Yeah, so there's... 10 years, 10 years of charge, 10 years of damage. And depending on the character, the longer you negative edge, the more special properties it'll get or the more damage it will get. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, I think BB Tag is a really good example of a game that did simplicity right because I've talked to a number of people in my life who are brand new to these games uh, and also just getting introduced into anime fighters in general. And the common, like, you know, conception of the game or the common, like, feeling that people have going into it is wow this game looks really really complicated and it does look really really complicated it does look that way i don't think it's that much more complicated than other fighting games say like tekken or street fighter or kof or whatever right i don't think they're that much more complicated than those games uh, they just look it you know so it's more intimidating but uh i think in recent years i'd say arxis has done a really good job of trying to well in some cases they i'll get to that in a bit um i think they've done a really good job of trying to make it easier for new players to get into their game and not have it be like just a jumble of information if actually i don't have a good example of it right now but if you could mind you take a look at blaze blue we'll say calamity trigger the very first version of it and you look at cf's version and you look at just the ui the health bars and like the round counts cf looks way more clear but you look at, like, old BB, there's just a clash of a ton of information, and I think they've done a really good job within the past couple of years to make it really clear who's winning, who's losing, and by what, right? I think they've done a really good job of that. I but, think uh, one of the most confusing things that BB did was guard primers in CS. I remember CS was actually my first one. I saw all those bars, and 100%. I saw they were moving, and I said, mm -hmm. what are those? What do they do? How do I get them? How do I lose them? Never mm -hmm. found an answer. Yeah, there's there's a lot of little. Th I I definitely know what you're talking about. It's the little little bars that are right next to the timer and everything, yep. and it's like, yep, yep. So they've done away with that entirely. That doesn't exist anymore in CF. And there's a lot of there are still some little things that like people have questions on. Obviously, I was talking about Seth about it because Seth had tried out a few characters in the game and just trials, and uh, he saw his health bar go purple, and he's like, "What is that?" And I'm like, "Don't worry about that. That doesn't actually matter to you until you like get to an intermediate level, you know." And that's another thing that I think um, good like fighting games could benefit from in tutorials because when fighting game tutorials happen, it's like you say there's like they jump around between like a bunch of different concepts in very quick succession, and a lot of these concepts probably don't even matter to you at a like base level. You know what I mean? And I think it's like worth mentioning that some games will actually just section it off entirely into a, like a separate like menu they'll be like all right cool this is the clear line of like hey are you comfortable as a beginner player are you comfortable 
And I think that's intermediate like yeah. expert. And more importantly, some of them will break into pieces like defensive options, mm -hmm. general mechanics and stuff like that, which I think is super valuable. These are all things that are necessary for a game to exist today. Nobody likes getting their ass beat in a fighting game, and they like to understand why when they're mm -hmm. new. So when they have clear control and understanding, it feels a lot better. Those are the things that should be in place for new players. Because ultimately, a community can't survive without new players. If you don't have new players, one day I'm going to be 40, dude. I'm going to accidentally have a kid, and my wrists are going to stop working. Who's playing Soul Calibur 8? Who's hey, playing me? <laughs> the, the accidental kid, possibly? Yeah, yeah. And now I gotta <laughs> teach my kid. And I gotta be a pad player. But even one of the best games that I know of with the tutorial is Killer Instinct. And I'm pretty sure last time I checked, Killer Instinct has 40 individual like trials, I guess you could there's call a them. lot. There's a lot. I actually went through them uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, I didn't go through all of them, but I went through a decent chunk of them. Killer and, Instinct uh, is very in-depth. It does a lot of good things, mm -hmm. but Asking a new player to sit down and go through 40 segments mm -hmm. is a lot, especially if they don't know anything about fighting games. It's like they've always said, like, I I know a lot of people and there's a lot of content creators that are like, you know, like, for example, like pro, um, sorry, Corey Gaming, they say this and like a couple other people here and there. I've heard it. Nobody likes to do homework when they want to do entertainment. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, when you boot up a fighting game as a new player, especially anime games. 3D games, they just throw you to the fucking wolves. Pardon my friends. But they just do it. It's like, oh, do you know how to play fighting games? No? Okay, well, get bodied online. I have to mention specifically, since you brought up 3D games, Tekken's tutorial is in the load screen toolbar. That's it. Yo, that's the yo, that load screen tutorial is it's kind of tight. Like, I, at the bottom of the screen, it's like, did you know that you can throw a power crush and they can't tech it? I'm like, wow! That is important what? information! That's really good! You mean I can giant swing back class? Like, yeah. <laughs> that's a huge deal. But it's only at the bottom of the screen and the loading screens. And here's the deal. Those loading screens are long as hell on PlayStation, but that doesn't justify... The actual tutorial, the actual tutorial of that game is... At the beginning of the story mode, where you play as baby Kazuya versus Heihachi, and it teaches you how to throw left, right, left, right, with punches and kicks, and then it says, here's your assist button, do a free electric wind god fist whenever you want. Yeah, hold down R1 and then just hit hit one. Just hit yeah, one, hit you'll one, get electrics. Electric wind god fist, yeah. it's like, alright, well, I mean, I guess, dude, like, I mastered the entire story mode with that. <laughs> just free saying. electrics but no um i agree it's like it's difficult for new players who obviously are there for they're not there to be like wow i really want to learn system mechanics you know what I mean? that's not why they're there they're there because they want to beat ass you know what i mean that's just the simple the simple of it they want to do it and they want to look cool doing it that's like the biggest thing so i think um keeping tutorials in relatively short bursts even though the information is probably really good and presented extremely well it's not uh it's not exactly like it's like in the case of undernight where you look at the tutorial like it doesn't just throw you into the tutorial it shows you the entire list right which is like this friggin long it's huge there's a there's a lot of stuff to learn in that game and there's a lot of stuff that's concise in the tutorial you know it teaches you well it tells you exactly what all this stuff does and how to use it but uh to a beginner player just jumping into undernight i think that's not the best way to go about it. I think if anything, it should just throw you into the tutorial. Don't even let you see that menu because it's, here's the thing. Fighting games should be trying to trick you into thinking that, you know, they're pretty like easy to get into because fighting games to begin with are not very easy to get into. They're not very extremely accessible for a lot of reasons, but I think we should work on trying to just make sure people are entertained first. And um, yeah, I, I have to mention, there's, I, there's a 50 50 split there, and this is something that I'm important to get out. There's a difference between difficulty and accessibility. Mm -hmm. Those two things are not the same thing. Right. Just because something is hard doesn't mean it's not accessible because you can always, you know, suck at the AI in like something like League of Legends, and mm -hmm. eventually you'll kind of figure the game out, you know, because like either A, your friends will tell you, or B, you'll actually use the tutorial. That's a really good system. You'll watch Champion Spotlights. There's lots of like, things that make the game accessible to you as a new player. 
versus difficulty with you know things like execution and stuff like that. Those two things are not the same. And it's something that, you know, like I watch, I watch everything fighting game related because, you know, I'm clinically addicted. And, um, you know, on the Tuesday show, James Chen, he talks about this quite a bit where he says that, you know, fighting games are hard. And it's like, yes, but like Ultra David is like shying away from like, he's like, you can tell he's like (laughs) really uncomfortable. He doesn't want in on this conversation because James brings it up immediately after complaining about Lucia. (laughs) <laughs> if if he brings it up, it's like fighting games are hard, and it's like absolutely yes, that's true. And then Ultra David tries to say every competitive game is hard, man. And he goes, but not as hard as fighting games. And it's like uh, mm, I want to get into that later. We'll get into mm. that one later. So, but going back to the Undernight thing, the thing that I want to point out the most with that tutorial system. I am a veteran fighting game player by technicality. I'm an O niner. I have been in the FGC for 11 years now, and it's really weird for me to say that out loud. I went into Undernight's tutorial system, and it tried to teach me about baiting strike throw, and I didn't understand it. Yeah. No yeah, new player is going to understand that concept mm-hmm. of, yeah, you're going to do this move, you're going to shy away, they're going to whiff, and you're going to whiff punish because they whiffed. And it's like, buddy... Yo, I just learned how to jump 10 fast. minutes ago. I this just learned how to jump. <laughs> this is Street Fighter V where somebody whips the throw and they're like, <laughs> for 15 minutes. It's like, that's a pretty quick throw. Yeah, it's like the breakdown of like what new players should be learning, like in what order is a really like complicated thing for a lot of developers, I feel. Because like with anime games, like, I think they, a lot of times when I, when, when I walk into Undernight and I did that tutorial, it felt like, once you hit just past the movement stage where it's like, okay, you can dash block and you can do this and like you can assault, right? You can do stuff like that. Once it hits What's that the difference point, between assault and a dash and a jump dash? Like, <laughs> what's the difference? Well, that's the thing. It's like, n- once, you, once you get past like the movement stage of this is how you jump, this is how you back dash, this is how you walk forward, walk back, assault, whatever, um, it immediately throws you into... Inform like like you say like information about like strike throw and stuff like that. It's like the the context of like this is a new player jumping into this game, and like you have to assume that they you almost have this is a weird thing for developers because like you have to assume that people don't understand fighting games and don't understand how to hold their freaking controller. You have to understand that like new players that are gonna pick up this game are not gonna know how to play fighting games. But you need to make sure that you can, like, convey a lot of this information without it being, like, Domi, press the A button. Press, press 5A. You know what yeah, I mean? They won't even say that, though. And they'll, they'll something press... to take note of, by the way, I don't think Undernight tells you that they operate their notations in cardinal directions and, and, and numerics. Oh, no no fighting game does nowadays. The only one that... They... I think there's... Mm, I think the only one I can think of that is like I think written down in the game, it's like, hey, you should learn this numpad notation thing. It doesn't tell you about like numpad notation, but they're like, you should look up numpad notation and because it'll help wow. in this. Tutorial. Wow. But but that is like an advanced tip thing where it's and I believe it's fighting hurts. I think fighting hurts does it, but it's like you don't need it, but like it helps. You know. And what's funny? But is that's that like num- that's like a necessary part of a conversation, right? Like if you're new. And you finally go, maybe I can win one game at my local, and then you get put against the arm. But (laughs) you're going one on one, one on one, the arm, with the arm. (laughs) But if you do that, you show up, you go, why am I getting bodied here? And he goes, well, my 236A is going to bait out your whatever. And you go, what are you saying right oh. now? <laughs> what is happening? Soul Calibur op also operates on that numpad notation, and I didn't know numpad notation because I was a Tekken player. And mm-hmm. I was like, well, that's down forward. And they're like, no, it's not. Stop. So yeah, that, like, so even the conversation, you can't even get into the conversation without, without knowing someone who can hold your hand the whole time, and that needs to be better. See, the thing is, like, numpad notation itself is not very complicated, but again, you need someone to explain it to you. You know what I mean? Or you need the fucking diagram. 
You know what I'm talking yeah, about? At the, the very diagram. least, you just need someone to be like, all right, dumbass, look at your numpad on your keyboard or your phone. That's mm-hmm. numpad notation. Yeah. Yo, I'm not going to lie. To this day, to this day, when somebody's explaining a combo to me in Soul Calibur, like if I'm streaming Soul Calibur, they're like, you got to do this one. And it's like 2 2 G, 2 P, 2 2 A plus G. I'm like, I know that's down, down. But mm-hmm. I still look at my keyboard and go, hmm. Uh. <laughs> And the, I think the best thing of all is that numpad isn't hard. It's just as Christian said, someone's got to explain it to you. And I saw, I think maybe a week ago, there was a video that got posted of uh, a female streamer. I think she Funny was, I, yeah, I think she was just getting into, into fighting games. And for like 40 seconds, like, what are you guys talking about? What is no numpad notation? I don't understand. This doesn't make any sense to me. Looks at her numpad, she's like, oh my God, I get it. 20 yeah. seconds. It took her 20 seconds. It's like, boom, I got it. This is easy. I completely understand why people do this. But so without why chat saying, the, look why at it in the game. You know? You really, because that's another thing of accessibility. If you throw a bunch of numbers at a new player, they're going to go, what is this? They're not going to understand that five is the neutral state of a stick or your D pad or whatever. So when you see two on four, two, three, six, two, three, two, six, two, three, like, you're like I don't know what this is. Well, I, I don't even know what a dragon point. What's a Hadouken? I think the the, I the easy solution to that though is to like you know you know how like when you do like displays and stuff like that, like just put one in the top right corner of the screen, top left, center, wherever you want it. You should be able to move it if you like. Um, have something that shows like a stick, like a controller, and as it goes right, it displays six, and as it goes left, it displays four, so that. As people play the game, they can see, like, that's what that is. So then it immediately starts to translate because it's starting to become a part of your mental, like, your your mental, like, what you have and as a fighting game player. You're like, okay, I understand that six is right. And I understand. And then, like, you know, I understand eight is jump. That's it, you know? If you're a Soul Calibur player, you really don't have to worry about seven and nine. <laughs> you, really, you're right. you really don't. It's also you're, a character-specific thing in general. You usually don't have to worry about those. those you were right with the word things. vernacular, though, for sure, because it is part of your vernacular. Mm-hmm. Not everyone who gets into it is going to understand numpad notation. I've had my fair share of people in the fighting community where I say, yeah, he just did 236B into 63, you know, whatever, and they go, but what did you just say to me? Like, yeah, oh, you know, yes, it's numpad notation. Like, why don't you just say quarter circle? Why don't you just say dragon punch? Because this is a lot easier to type. See, like, wanna... to, to me, like, I remember the first time I ever listened to Armando, ever. The first time I listened to The Arm, specifically, and I'm going to bring this up, especially because Christian is here, when Man, you're just gonna Armando gas you like that? was just like, hey, come over here. Ham, have you ever played the game Eunice? Yo, and I remember I was, that day. And I was like... No, I can't say I've played Eunice before. And he goes, yo, check out this character. Batista. You ever seen Batista? I was like, okay, cool. And he started to show me why the character was was just awful. And I think Great Fern Man was standing there like this in the back, just like <laughs> and as it's happening, Kristen is trying his best to win. And they're laughing with each other about how messed up Batista is. But I don't even understand the jokes. And because the best part I was is, so lost. No, the best part is Christian, you know, I know back then you weren't very uh, well versed in Eunice, but legitimately trying his best. And the arm's like, ha ha, yeah, you see how dumb this is? Like, I'm yeah, doing look how this. dumb this yeah. is. Hey, is he looking back stuff. and talking to us? And it's like, dude, like, how are you beating his ass? Like, you're like, like he turned at around at his stick and he goes, have you seen how stupid this is yet? All right, check this out. <laughs> <laughs> like, like mid match, he's just turning to us, be like, "Yeah, see how dumb this is. Like, I'm gonna do this thing. See how it worked right there, and I'm gonna do this setup without even looking at it. And look, it worked." And that's like, but that's like what I was, what I'm trying to say. What I was trying to bring out of that story is not specifically just roasting Christian because I think it's awful, <laughs> but, but it's still super funny. It's still super funny to me. This is mm-hmm. this is my favorite moment of Armando. If you don't know the arm, follow him on Twitter. Anywho, um, I didn't understand what armando was saying at all because of the way that he spoke because of the community he was in so then 
I had to, while he's destroying Christian, go, what is a negative edge? Because it's Batista. Mm -hmm. And those are the kinds of things that I feel like should be part of, should, should be implemented in a game. Because now you have guy that just shows up to his first tournament and he has no idea how to talk to anybody. And he just feels stupid. Because why wouldn't you feel stupid? Everybody's speaking literal um, binary code and you're just... <laughs> You're sitting there so, like, oh. I do want to. I do want to highlight that there are certain games, and I won't say the information is presented well, but the information is in the game. I am looking at CF right now, and uh, <laughs> literally right now, always chilling. looking at CF, always, always looking at CF. Always. He's chilling um, in the. So in the, they have a section in it <laughs> that's called library. Now this includes literally everything that you need to know about BB. Literally everything. And this goes like, at first, this is just like a, oh, let's just look at the lore and look at the characters and what they have. the game has to say about the game, right? Well, it also has a section that just says fighting game. It's just labeled fighting game. The first thing it tells you is six. <laughs> it says six plus A directions. So what this refers to is that it's numpad notation, but it's not the first thing listed. That's the problem, right? It has the, It actually does have the section for numpad notation in this game. It, it explains it to you. But the problem here is that it's displaying a lot of this information in, first off, an entire tab that's not even labeled stuff for fighting games and how to learn. It's not a tutorial section. It's the library. It's for lore. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's for lore. It's about lore on weapons. It's about, like, because, you know, BB and GG have stupid lore. It's expansive, right? Entire expanding universe, whatever. But who cares about yeah, go that? Ahead. Let's go ahead and okay. get into that blaze blue. Let's, let's, let's not. Let's discussion. not right now because that could go on for too long, and I don't want to talk about that right now. The point is, they're not labeling information in a correct way, and it's not user friendly. You know what I mean? And that's like something that's really important, especially for new players, because I mean, you and I have both looked at Smash GG before. Because I'm gonna shit on Smash GG right now, and how shitty the UI is. Where <laughs> NT was literally last night figuring out how the fuck do I even start a bracket? Dude, how I do I even do? Didn't know. Like actually because it's not where's the start the tournament button like for real and guess it's what? hidden it's, it's quite literally menus. hidden it's behind three menus <laughs> like you would th you would think that you could just go into the bracket page and find the start button right there just mm -hmm. on the bracket page where yeah, it's just on the same page. not started because it at the very top it just says not started it's like oh there should be a button right next to that that says start the bracket mm -hmm. there's not you have to go into the settings you have to go to the brackets uh, page. You have to go to the specific bracket you want to start. And then in the very top right, not in the middle of your screen, to start the bracket. Like, mm -hmm. why is this hidden in such a way? And Chris is right. It's, you can't hide your information like that in a Especially menu. Especially important information. It's like Stuff important that to people understand need the game. to know. Because, yeah. like, dude, like, I will say, I think we, we actually, we might have said this at a different occasion, or maybe this was a conversation I was having with NT last week. I think fighting game developers, they take their community for granted. Like, yeah, yeah we like, did have this conversation. Look I think how this great important. it is that we already have this built-in fan base of people who love what we, love what we do. We love this. Mm -hmm. And because they love it so much, we don't need to spoil them with things they need in the game. Mm -hmm. so let okay so let's not even bring net code into the conversation that doesn't even need to be there we know that but they go well okay uh why put a tutorial in the game if everybody knows how to play cf already they've played nine thousand other ways of playing blaze blue at this point well if they know how to play guilty gear they definitely can get into blaze blue all you need is like a shore you can form from 2000 You'll the best be way right. I can explain this for anyone who's not familiar with fighting games is if you've ever played a Bethesda game, it's a buggy mess. But no oh, matter what, you're going to find thousands of mods fixing those bugs. So it's almost incentivizing Bethesda to be like, just release this buggy mess. Our community will fix it. And Ham's right. All the community members will give you that information hand over fit. You know, they don't care they how they get it to you. They want, they to, want teach to teach you. you. Yeah. They want to sit you down because like, Kristen's been shilling CF to me for like, I don't know how long, and I want to die. But he will teach you how to play the game. He bought it for me. People really care about this genre. They have this built-in group of people who will go, this is how to play this game. Because there's no good explanation. 
If you play Tekken 7, get familiar with that blasted salami and Eris videos from 2014. Yeah. I, I kid They're you not. Right. Learning Tekken 7, I went back and learned tech from Tekken Tag 2. Yep, because Tekken it's Tag still 2. relevant. The armor king, the, the Enemigo Armor King guide, still <laughs> accurate. I guarantee the, you. Bird. I <laughs> guarantee you. If you look up Korean backdashing tutorial videos, a couple of the first results will be from Tag 2. A couple will be from Tekken It'll 7. It'll be Eris videos. A couple It'll will be, be Eris yeah, videos. The first video I watched on Tekken 7 Korean backdashing was his Tekken Tag 2 Korean backdashing video. Because that was the first thing that popped up. And then there's the there's the Anakin video, which I think is objectively better because it's simpler and it's a little less degrading. But <laughs> I um, tried to look up a wave dashing tutorial for Hitbox because, you know, I got this from Dynamite and I was like, you know, this is a really good tool for Tekken. I said, how do I wave dash on Hitbox? And Tekken Tag 2 video popped up in 2011. Yep. Like that's... That's like the, but that's where you're at, right? Like you need, you have to have this like group of people who comes together and goes, yo, check out how to play this game because no one's going to tell you how. Like the game isn't going to tell you. We are going to tell you. So that's why like, I think they don't see a reason to do these things. And then like, I've seen Harada in interviews of Harada. Why does the Tekken tutorial suck? And his answer was, we have data on the ways that the game were used in the past was used in the past and with this data it shows that people will play this mode or they'll play that mode and they'll play this mode and most of it's just online ranked so we don't feel the need to put that in there but it's so short-sighted Be it's so short-sighted because if you don't put those in there guess who's playing ranked it's going to be glaciating playing online until he's fucking 40 okay because he's been playing online since he was like 13. And that's the problem you create when you don't implement systems in a game to make it easier for people to get into. But there is the other extreme on this, and this is making the game easier for other people that don't play fighting games or won't play fighting games. And that's the other part of the thing I think we need to get to. Um... You made me realize something just now, and that I think something that could really help is because people are playing online, they're going to get bodied, they're going to get dumpstered, they're going to get shit on, and they have absolutely no way of looking at the other person going, saying, how do I beat this? There is no person right here next to me. They're, they're on the other side of the screen, maybe 50 miles apart, and you don't even get a chance to talk to them because most games don't allow mic, which is a good thing. But my point being, you can't talk to anybody unless you already have that community in front of you. So if I didn't know Ham and he beats the dog shit out of me in Soul Calibur, I can't just go to his room or hit up Discord and be like, yo, Ham, good set, but how do I beat you? How do I fix this? He's just on the other, uh, other side of the screen. He's now lost in the void until I run into him again. And so that, it made me my think thing is that I will teach you because I have. I'm like, check out all these fraudulent setups. And I, that's the first thing I teach people when I play them. And it makes All me think of Final Fantasy XIV specifically, because I remember years and years and years ago, they added a system for what's known as mentors. And you can only be a mentor by being a high-level player or an experienced player. That system is there only to teach newbies. You can't be in that mentor chat as a newbie. It, like it, or I'm sorry, you can't be in there anymore after you've hit a certain point. When you hit a certain level cap, a certain amount of time, because it's no longer meant for you. That chat is literally just meant for people to learn how to play an MMO, because MMOs are almost just as daunting as fighting games. Look at all the buttons you have on your screen. Look at how many levels you have to go. It's the same damn thing, but that system allows high-level players to teach newbies what to do. There's nothing like that in fighting games. Like, I will say that Arxis does have beginner lobbies, but that's not good enough because all the beginners lobby doing is saying, hey, if you're a terrible player, you're just starting the game, come in here, you're going to find other terrible players. You're no gonna one's going to teach you anything. You're going to find terrible players, and guess who's waiting in the wings? Me. That one random dude that knows how to do fundamentals in any fighting game, and then they smoke you. <laughs> and you, they leave because mm -hmm. they're not there for that. When I play Street Fighter Five online, I suck. I'm bronze. 
I play Sagat and I just <laughs> throw fireballs because they don't know what to do because they don't know how to walk and block because that's not in the tutorial. Street Fighter Five does have a tutorial. It sucks. It forces you to play the tutorial when you. First it literally forces you to play. It's not good. <laughs> it's terrible. It's yeah. Really bad. But um, going back to the discussion of like developers making tools for you know people or changing things about the game in such a way uh, that end up ruining it or rather making ending up making it easier for the wrong crowd because a lot of times when you look at these games that get simplified uh, to like really like system level stuff like they change big things about the game that make it a lot more simple and like my biggest like example in the current climate of uh fighting games is strive um strive actually still has the gatling system which for those that don't know the gatling system it's being able to chain lights to heavies so it, light say, medium heavy yep, medium, just light, medium heavy. I mean, heavy medium light makes sense to me like that's well that's negative or sorry that's uh, reverse beat, but that's existent in also Undernight and uh, other games like Melty Blood. But um, that's synonymous with those games. There's some other conditions that exist in Grand Blue as well. Also, Grand Blue being a very good game, I think for beginners for a lot of reasons. But at the same time, uh, we'll just we'll we'll leave that out for now because I want to talk about Strive for a second. Strive has the current thing where the Gatling system uh, was limited in Strive, mm -hmm. um, which means that. Ordinarily, you know, you would be able to chain lights to, you know, heavies. In the case of Guilty Gear, they have punch, kick, slash, heavy, slash, and dust. So that's a little, it's a little, like, harder to see. But you would look at your punches and kicks as lights, and your slash as, like, your medium, and your heavy slash as your heavy. That's what you would, like, think of it as. Um, you cannot, you can no longer chain multiple normals into each other. It's only you pick a normal. And then you go into a command normal. Yeah, command normal. I saw into that. A command normal. And that's inherently harder, by the way. <laughs> like so the now thing about you're this... doing almost like target combos. Exactly. That's what I was gonna say. It's it feels a lot closer to Street Fighter target combos. Now here's the thing. When a new player picks up an anime game and they're like, Well, I just want to hit buttons and see how, what this game feels like, what the character feels like, whatever, right? When you hit all these buttons and they do nothing literally nothing like you can mash fucking punch kick slash heavy slash it does nothing all it goes into is punch and that's it right it does punch and then no, you get almost no feedback for like am i doing anything like valuable at all whereas like if you were to start a new player with say exert or something right mm -hmm. and it's still considerably like a complicated game right there's lots of little systems and the thing about that game is that like a lot of the systems uh, they all do a similar thing, but it's like the difficulty of choosing which one for the right time, right? Like that's like the difficulty of the the options that you have in gear. But regardless, you know, Strive took out a lot of those options, and I think that in some cases can be a step in the right direction. But the idea of taking out the gat, like limiting the Gatling system, not only does it make it harder for new players to understand, you know, and start building towards something better, like say like. I need to make a block string and I'm a new player. I'm going to hit punch, kick, slash, heavy, slash, and dust, right? And those, all those buttons chain in together and they create a block string, but it's not very solid. So, but that's a good starting ground for, for new players to like work their way up to make something better. Now, the fact that that doesn't exist anymore in the current gear. Uh, They're like, we're making it easier, guys. You didn't make things easier. Mm, it's not that it much was easier, easier to... before. Because you have to think harder about it now. It's something you have to mm -hmm. think about now, you know? And that's another thing. It's like adding to, like, the mental stack for new players, which is something that, like, a lot of players, even intermediate, don't even realize is really taxing, you know? The mental stack of how many things you have to think about on the screen at once while dealing with someone else pushing your shit in is, like, a real issue, right? And that's really difficult for new players because that's why when you watch a lot of new players, they flail, you know? They mash the buttons, right? But when mashing buttons doesn't even work, I think that can be an issue because it'll make it even harder for your new player to want to even play the game. Now, yeah, it's like, you know, if, if you watch somebody in the corner and you know, so they just get jumped in on, she takes out her shotgun. You already know who I'm talking about. And she's just, buff, buff, buff. <laughs> and every time you try to hit a button, you just die. It's like, well, that just sucks, but you know why, but in this mm -hmm. new game, it's like, it don't feel like in strive from what I've watched and observed, 
because I myself am not a Guilty Gear player, people feel like they've had options that make sense taken away from them. Because like even in something like Undernight, which is a game I did try um, specifically because of Jobin. Jobin was like, yo, play Undernight every day on Twitter for like a year straight. And I was like, damn it. I just got random money in my PSN wallet. I guess I'm going to play Undernight. I understood that if I was in a bad situation, I could hit 2A and it was fine, you know? Mm-hmm. And then if I got a hit, if I got a hit, I was playing Elf out, it was like A, B, C, 3C, A, B, C in the air, super. Yep. And that was that was so easy to put together. That was my B and B. <laughs> that was mm-hmm. money in the bank. And yep. you remove that option from things because you want to make it simpler, but by making it simpler. Now you have to teach people how to do target combos because that's what you're doing. Because now you're going, okay, well, let's say it's 5A. I mean, you know, it's it's five punch into the um six dust. And you're like, all right, like I think another thing that we need to touch on is the combos themselves. They have specifically said in stride that they don't want combos to last as long. How do you compensate a veteran player for hitting their combos? The shorter combo's got to do more damage now. You make everything hit like a freight train, bro. So now you die in 0.5 seconds. That's another direction that I think is inherently, like, I was going to talk about the veteran players uh, and, like, what this kind of system does for them as well. The changes to the Gatling system actually end up making it feel more boneless. You know what I mean? Because they can't construct pressure the way they want to. It's within the confines of the game right Mm. it's like limited inherently limited whereas like gear is known as like and some people would say an open world fighting game you know (laughs) shout outs to filipino champ it's open world man and and uh shout outs to actually heard i rewatched a video from majin obama recently he said this combo system is a sandbox style open world combo system Mm. and i was like that's really ambitious but i can see where he's coming from you know, it's a lot of being able to choose whatever you want to construct either your pressure, your combos, or whatever it is that you want to do in that game, including your movement as well. These are all things that are like, the limit is your imagination in these kinds of games, right? Especially in the case of Guilty Gear. Now, the issue is, a lot of these intermediate players that are coming, and intermediate and high-level players are coming into Strive, and they are already limited, but not by their minds. They're limited by the confines of the game, and in the name of simplicity right and even that it's not even making it simple for new players to get into it's just creating another thing that players need to learn right that they need like a barrier it's a literal barrier of you know you can't chain those together you can't just hit buttons in this game and it's like this game's supposed to be simple it's supposed to it's be just, supposed to be buttons. easy being able to just hit buttons 3d games you don't get to do that shit at all like you don't have that and some AA. of the yeah, you got, in Soul Calibur, you AA somebody if you're scared of them sidestepping. If you think you got them scared from moving, you BB. Maybe throw. You walk up throw. Oh, I want to put pressure on them. I'm going to throw. What am I going to do on their wake up? 3B. And that's your general flow chart for a new player. But even that takes a while to tighten down. That takes a minute. But anime games have always had the privilege of being able to say everything gatlings into each other. Mm-hmm. In almost every game. So then if you take away that layer... You've already made the game harder. So then the next question is, do they mean it when they say that at all? Are they, are they being truthful? Are they being for real when they say that? Because like, my, I've heard Majin Obama say this. I've heard Juyuna say this. I've heard Sejam say this. They all talk about it. They're like, they're lying. Like, they're saying that this game is yeah. being simplified for new players and they're full of shit. The game is getting harder, but... Again, like me and NT discussed last week, personally between us, the game's getting harder, but they're stripping things away. So you, it's a race to the bottom as to where you're going to be. Remember like the first week of Grand Blue, everybody's like, oh man, Matera Vasaraga, blah, blah, blah. But Matera's top tier. People f- solved that game in like two weeks. SKD solved the OSing in that game and it being really bad. In uh, a week. In two, no, in two days. It was two days. <laughs> he was there for literally two days, and Obama was like, he's just built different, bro. Like, he can't, like, like he's like the hero of anime games. He just figures this shit out. Like, and I, I, different. I want to go back to the combo damage because specifically for new players, they're going to be exploded faster by any player. 
and everybody's going to play Potemkin. Every new player is going to want to play Potemkin because they want they want to do Potemkin Buster because it does like forty percent of their it immune support. It does actually more. just actually just fifty percent. Oh, it does fifty yeah, percent. So you do, well, on, you on do ship two, it does like fifty percent, but so you do two pop percent. busters and you win. So now you're like, well, I can't do big combos because when I when I got into fighting games, the reason I started with grapplers. And the reason I loved grapplers was because execution's non-existent. You just get the read and you kill someone. And that's what new players can fall back on. They can go, well, I can play grappler. I can play Potemkin and do Pop Buster twice, and I win. Because they don't know how to do the combos because the combos are too hard. But if they do get those combos, if they get hit, they die. See, and I want to go back into Killer Instinct for this one because I did try replaying Killer Instinct, and there are some new players. And I guarantee you, I'm going to pick up my controller and recreate a new player. Every time they get knocked down, mm -hmm. this is all they're trying to do. Every single time. No matter what, every bronze or silver player, when they get knocked down, they're just going, they're just mashing lights. And I guarantee you, I'm going to meet you. You're going to get hit. You're going to die. But the difference between this and in Strive is in Killer Instinct, I have to hit you about seven times before you die. If you get meatied seven times and that's not enough to teach you, I don't know what is. But in Strive, up, you're going to get meated once after being knocked down. You're going to die. And you're going to get put you, into the You're corner. not going to understand why. They're going to wall break you because that's a mechanic that people really seem to enjoy. Nobody seems to like that. Stop that. You know the Fallout, the, the fallout meme? No, everybody did. Everybody disliked <laughs> everybody that. Disliked that. <laughs> everybody disliked that. I have not talked to a single person that's like, wall break, woo! You know that? It just sucks. Like, But... You get the wall break, you get the damage, you get the meter. They go back into the neutral for half a second because they want to take away Oki because they're like, well, this will make it easier for people to get up. Um, but and they're basically down to, like, no health after that. And then the next mix-up, they're dead. That's it. You got to play for, like, 20 seconds. And the, something that, that Chris, Chris Chaos, he brought up when he was here was that he thinks the damage is that high because it was a beta and because it was a beta, they don't want people on the servers, like stressing the stressing mm -hmm. matches for that long. So they increased the damage. So matches would be quicker, but you get a general feel for the game. Yeah. He said it was specifically a stress test for the lobby system to see how it would work. But I don't believe that I like, I it's plausible. There, I'll say it's, it's certainly plausible. And the reason I don't like, I don't know something about arc system works is I from what I've observed from other players talking to me about those games, they straight up just lie, bro. <laughs> like every like they they're just like lie. yeah, I mean like Potemkin Buster isn't gonna do fifty percent, and it's like then you get the game and Potemkin Buster does fifty percent, and then Heavenly Potemkin Buster does like seventy, and you're like, all right, well, what happened there? Like you they're jumped, like, bro, whoops, <laughs> didn't mean it. Like they did mean it. They did mean it. Like they mean these things when they do them. And I it's like the beta, I don't believe them when they say like this is not the way the game is gonna be, because it's clearly the way the game is gonna be. So I want to go back and touch upon what you were saying, how we talked personally. And let's let's go back to Grand Blue, because I think Grand Blue is going to be the easiest game to talk about. So they have made it so that Grand Blue is a simplified fighting game, so to say. But the okay. problem when you simplify is that the veteran players are going to solve your game in a week or less. Whereas new fighting game players, like, so if my screen, you know, these are my hands, this is your barriers entry, you know, it's this big, this is the, the floor that you have to get past. So, so long as you get above this little bit, you're fine. When you do that, you're raising the scale floor immensely because mm -hmm. you now have to learn all this gap between the floor and the ceiling, you know, right here to even get into being competitive. You have this much to learn just to be relevant. Whereas fighting game players who are veterans, they learn that shit in two days. Yeah, it's a new game, but they're familiar with all those mechanics. Or at the very least, they know how to identify those mechanics that they can abuse. Fundamentals will carry them through the beginning. General knowledge and understanding of how the systems are implemented in the game will get them to the next stage. And then after that comes one or two Discord discussions as to optimization of damage, and they've done and it. Here's the thing that's and even worse. Which, Congratulations, Ham, the game is solved. Ham, I want you to share what you shared with me the other day, and that they say, oh, 
combos are hard. Execution is hard. No more DP inputs. We're not going to have those. 236, 214, maybe down, down. That's it. You don't have hard execution. And then you get certain people that are like, but I don't like execution. I just want my specials to be on a button, like Rising Thunder. That's a shit system. Shitty. I don't, I don't, I personally think that, like, when it comes to, like, uppercuts, when it comes to booms, there are, there are inherently things that should never be changed. Um, change drives UI. It looks like shit. Um, Guile Sonic Boom is a charge motion. Why is it, exo- why? Because it's a really effective zoning tool. Now, put that on a button. And now you have him throwing booms all day. And you can't get in. You can't do anything about it. Hey, somebody's jumping in on me. I want to flash kick him. Actually, well, flash kick? hold on. I have the immediate thing to go along with this. I just remembered. You guys remember Daigo's Gaffro box? Yeah. Yes. He was able to walk and boom. The yeah. thing that we're saying you should never be able to do. As soon as people saw that, like, ban that shit right now. Yeah, because right we now. know the potential threat of allowing a zoner like that to walk forward and throw sonic booms. So if you simplify these motions in this way, you are now strengthening a character archetype in a way that was not intended. If you give these characters easy access to their moves, they will do things that they were not expected or capable before, which if you wanted that is fine. If you want that your zoner to be able to chuck booms walking forward and do flash kicks instantaneously, then you better have good anti-air op- and air-to-air options. You better be able to air block. <laughs> like You better be able to... Walking and blocking better be damn good. Because if you don't have those things, now Guile's the best character in Street Fighter. Because you can't get in on him, ever. You can't jump in on Freedom, ever. It's not happening. Ever. And I have a friend that he plays... He plays Grand Blue right now. And he's new to fighting games. And he goes, I really, really like this game because it's really simple. I don't want to learn how to do the dragon punch. And I don't want to learn how to do the quarter circle. He didn't even call it the dragon punch. I don't even remember what he called it. It was such an out-of-touch term that I was like, whatever. And he's like, and I don't know how to throw the, the fireball thing. And he said, the fireball thing. And I was like, holy hell. Like, he is very new to the genre, which is okay. And I was like, but giving people access to stuff like that on just a button. Grand Blue does a good job because they cool it down. You can't just mash a button and it, like instantly just get another one. They prevent you from having access to things that would be dangerous over and over. Mm-hmm. But if they didn't do that, that game would be very different. It would be very different. People would be mashing DP with one button and <laughs> you never and jump again. Let's talk about the other side of doing the simplified input. You do less damage doing the simplified input. And the game actually says good when you do the proper motion. So you're mm-hmm. rewarded. You actually get better frame data and better distancing on certain moves. Like I know Grand's boot goes farther, does more damage, and you get the cooldown faster. So what it really does is it gives you a gateway to get in but as soon as you learn anything about that game, if you're doing simplified inputs, you're going to lose. Except maybe the occasional Skybound art where you need it in a clutch and you only need like a thousand damage or whatever the damage numbers in the game are. That's like the only instance I could see justifying a simplified input. Other than that, if you're using simplified inputs, you're not going to be playing at a high level because the, you're intentionally hindering yourself i don't know i think that the general consensus is that you will you will use simplified inputs a it's lot of the top players use. um a lot of the top players use those inputs because it lights it allows for like things like really really deep anti ears. so like mm-hmm. you'll see in a lot of situations where people will actually do simplified inputs for their dps because it's not like you're going to be using that DP immediately the next time anyways, right? Like, if you're going to DP on Wake Up, just do fucking simple, like, simple input. Because it's like, or, or when you're anti-hearing, simple input. It's like, you're not going to be using that again, right? You don't want to hear like, your, your opponent, if you're next to them, you know, in 2025 when this is all over, they can hear you cranking that DP. But are they going to hear a simple, a simple input Wake Up reversal DP? Like, yeah, bro, it's just forward and two buttons. Just hit the two like buttons. It. Do the uppercut. Actually, BB Tag does that as well. Two button DPs in that game. Re- universal. But either way, um, yeah, I think uh, I don't even remember where we were with that point, to be honest. Just simplifying games in general and how it's hurting us because Ham said he, he has a friend who's learning simplified things, but it's not really helping him. And the reason it's a problem is because inherently, 
moves have complex inputs for balance. And not many people understand that. They keep saying, oh, the, the input motions are archaic. We should ditch this system. It doesn't make any sense. And it's because you're looking at it from simply a mechanical input. Because you yeah, don't you're want like, to move well, your arm like that. this is hard and I want access to cool things easier. And it's like, well, imagine simple input electric wind god fist. God. Which is in Tekken, in the story mode. Yeah, in the story it's mode, there. and I, it's not, I don't think it's in, like, the simple input, because they have simple inputs in Tekken 7 as it's well. It's only Win God Fist if you do it in multiplayer. Okay, yeah, Win God Fist. Which is still imagine, really good. Imagine having access to electric Win God Fist at the press of a button, because that's a special move. So the, in Tekken, they don't have specials. They just have iconic moves. One button Death Fist. One button Demo Man. One button electric wind god fist. There's there are gates behind or it has to be just ran demo man, by the way. Um, yeah. there are gates behind things to prevent people from getting to that. They have it's like a barrier of entry to the highest level. And if you cre- if you knock that barrier down, it doesn't make it easier necessarily for the, the players because they're just gonna whiff electric wind god fist and die. That's mm. <laughs> they'll they'll still get killed. It makes it easier for the top players who are already really good at the game, but they're like, wait, yo, one button EWGF? Hell yeah, they hit the button. They know when to use it. So now they're just now they're destroying people. They have a plus you frame up. Anything, uppercut. one button electric when God. One button electric. Like they smell it. They're mm, boom. One button at the uppercut every time. And you're like, okay, well, what do I do? And now about they just that? have quad electric combos and shit. Yeah, they have really... quad electric when God fist into the boom, boom with Kazia yeah. into the wall combo. Man, you are now. If know. you're sitting here listening to this and you're wondering, well, why can't electric be on a button? I cannot stress this enough because as a Tekken player, electric when God fist is quite literally the best move in the game. You can't argue it. It's a 14 frame launcher plus five on block. And it pushes back. So if you electric someone at the wall, they can't do anything because they're going to die if they do. And it's the best whiff punisher in the game because it's a launching 14 frame. 13 if you do the perfect with Kazuya. There's nothing in that game that can beat it. Quite like on paper. Technically speaking, that move has two flaws. It has the input itself. And it's linearity. it's, it's, It's got the input, which is considerably difficult like a lot of people would you know say you know doing consistent electrics especially under tournament nerves is really difficult you know oh, getting it's incredibly it at the exact difficult. Time. yeah and that's like one of the big things about it that's one of the big barriers the other thing is that it being a high so you can duck it um mm-hmm. but that's the thing though it's like fundamentally like tag, tag one where <laughs> you can make every electric with god miss the mid <laughs> so that's the thing though it's like you look at you look at, like, fundamentally, they designed that move in such a way where they knew it was going to be really good. They designed it to be that really good, but they said, well, it's way too easy if... What if they were just like, fuck it, it's forward two. Forward two is electric, right? What if they just said that, right? Like, way back in the day. And they were like, well, in testing, we were like, well, this move's really, really good. There needs to be another drawback besides it just being duckable, because it's really fast as well. It's a really fast launcher. It does a lot of damage. You know, why wouldn't you just hit forward two all the time? You know what I mean? And the reason is... Well, there's other launchers because doing consistent electrics is really, really difficult, you know, especially under tournament nerves. And when you're in last round, last game, and it's grands, and your grandma's in the in the fucking stands, you know, he's screaming, yeah, hit him, hit him. And it's just like, it's not going to work because, you know, you're you're stressed, right? You're you're fighting, you're fighting friggin' Yeah, like, Eric said this many, many, many just, moons you know, ago. Many moons ago, he said this about Nii. He was like, even Nii can't do electric wind godfist every time. If Nii can't do it, no one can. That guy's yeah. a machine. Mm-hmm. So, it's like, he's right. But that's at, like, again, these are simple moves. I mean, these are difficult moves that are gated behind. But if you take a game, like, I don't know, I, a game I love, Samso, it's a very easy game. In concept, if you whiff, you're gonna get heavy slash, you know, and it's gonna hurt a lot. Don't whiff if you, bro. It, yeah, if you if you get baited to throw somebody, if you're try like you know they run up, you run up and you're like I'm gonna throw, and you and they backdash on you, you're gonna get SSM, and it's gonna do like 85 percent of your life bar. There, the the questions of Sam show 
versus the answers you get were generally pretty solved pretty quickly. But that's kind of what makes that game unique because the threat and the way that it's played, it's just one button at a time. You know, everything is one button at a time. But when it comes to other games, when you strip away all of those options to create simplicity, when a game like that becomes solved, it becomes less interesting. It becomes more competitive, more fast. And it's just like, it's hard. It's like, it's hard to play when you suck. If you suck, you're like, I don't know how to make a block string. I don't know how to make a, I don't know what to do in a situation when I'm plus. I mean, there are guides. You can actually look up like flowcharts and stuff like that. They exist for Grand Blue because the flowchart is solved. I think the other great game to touch upon is release Dragon Ball Fighters. That game upon release was one of the most bare bones games I've ever seen because the combos were homogenous for like 90% of the cast. You the didn't combos have... are still homogenous. Nah, <laughs> not really. I mean, a there's lot a lot of them are. A lot of them, a lot of them are still very the same. There's still a lot of differing branches that you can mm-hmm. do to really extend your combos and get like big beefy damage. Well, the problem yeah, with that game, the, the, the problem with that game is that because of that, it was figured out within a week. And after that week, people learned how to lock you down for 30 seconds of you don't straight get to play the game straight. at all. What does that mean for a new player who's never had to defend anything in a fighting game in their life? means they're going to get blown up. They never heard about a jump cancelable normal in their life. They don't know. And how are they supposed to know? They're sitting there holding this block string. And I've heard time and time again, new players ask, when is it my turn? They'll never know. It's not. (laughs) It's it's not. They, this is an airtight block string that I figured out in the lab in two hours because I'm better than you and you suck. What do you do? How do you figure out how to make a block string like that? You don't because there's nothing there to help you. And the tutorial is not going to tell you how to defend against the 30 second block string. It's not going to tell you how to make a 30 second block string. It's not going to tell you anything of how to fight this. It's not even going to tell you how to avoid that situation. It's, it's just going to happen. And you're going to, yeah, have to you're that. just going to, you're going to get hard knockdown, slide knockdown. You're going to get level three. You're going to get level one. I mean, level one, level one, and you're going to die. And then you're going to go back into the neutral. They're going to hit you with some cheap shit. And it's going to happen again because that's just generally how that works. It's and like Dragon I, Ball was touted as a sl- simplified fighting game. And yet, like, I myself, as somebody who doesn't like team games, uh, to play them, to watch them is great. With mm, Dragon Ball, not necessarily for me. I don't, I don't like watching Dragon Ball because it's too long. But, um, you know, I'm not really a team guy. But if you put me in the fray and you're like, all right, so here's the general mechanics, I'm still going to gonna get destroyed against another guy that just hardly plays them. Because what am I going to do? What, what, is it, what are you giving me as a new player in your game to make it more simple? But I mean, to make it more accessible, but not easier. Because once you make a game easier, again, it's like I feel like it's, like a, it's a repetitive thing. You take away mechanics to make the game easier or you implement systems to make the game simpler, right? And then top player goes, ooh, these things that were really hard to do before are now very easy. I know what to do with these things to set them up, and I'm going to utilize them in that way to bunker bust everybody for the rest of their life. And then the simple player, the new player, will go, well, let me see how I can utilize these mechanics. And they don't know what to do with them, so again – they just get blown up. Like it's, it's like a who is this for? Is my question. This is ultimately what it comes down to. Hey, in the NBA, the the net is ten feet up. We've decided to lower it down to seven feet because we realized new players because can't Derek dunk Rose very is kind of short, bro. What does that What does that mean? <laughs> Every single person in the NBA is going to start dunking on your ass. It means and you're not going to do Shaq anything was in his better. Prime, that man is literally just putting his hand in the bucket, bro. Like that's what he would do. It's like you make it easier for Derek Rose. But Derrick Rose might still have a hard time dunking, right? Mm-hmm. So, but Shaq still has no problem dunking on you because Shaq could dunk before. He could do it even easier now. So now you all made he it has easier to do is for him. the ball and literally dip it into the bucket, bro. Like that's all he's got to do because you stripped away something that made it harder to execute. You made it easier, but you made it easier for the guy that was already good at it. And you, <laughs> yeah, D Rose has no knees, um, but you made it harder. 
um, you made it harder for that, that well, not necessarily harder, but it's not easier for that other guy, for the for the new guy, or for the short guy in this scenario. Um, I'll say that something that I really enjoyed um, that was a change is that I myself as a Soul Calibur player, I play Astaroth. Instead of his commands being NRS inputs where it's um it's four six and six four for his command throws, they turn it into quarter circles. Fine. No big deal. His command throws were like part of his game, but not the biggest part of his game in Soul Calibur 2. Mm-hmm. Now they're very much a part of his game. The character has changed dynamically because of that, you know? I can and I can appreciate that. But it's so it's so bizarre because um, I've been I've been trying to figure this out for like two three weeks because we've talked about it casually from time to time, but I want to know who is this supposed to appeal to when you change things that were already established to be easier? Because if you change things to make them easier, you're just going to create a bigger problem for when they finally enter the fray because everybody's going to be good. Mm-hmm. Interesting enough, Soul Calibur Reversal Edge. Yeah, I think that was a mechanic for new players. I think that is a mechanic that higher players know how to work around and don't have to abuse and know how to blow it up easily. But for new players fighting against other new players, if they're getting pressured, they could press those buttons and get out of their situation. Yeah. But it's a handicap. It, it's a handicap. At some point in time, you need to learn how to stop using that because people will blow you up for it. But I think I it's a think good it's a, entryway. It's- it's still a viable option, even at the highest level. People still do it, but I mean, now it's plus on block, and it does chip damage. So it it's 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 more effective for high level players. So I can appreciate that. But when you have like with mechanics like that, you go well. Reversal has exists. Well, so does A plus B, and <laughs> because A plus B exists, break attacks. For those of you who don't know, lethal hits exist, and you get full combos, and they die. So they created a mis- uh, something they could fall back on, but they get killed for it. If they mess it up, it's like a DP. So that was pretty good because it is for the new players and they do move away from it. And at the highest level, it's used for like frame trapping people, which is pretty, pretty good. I think that's pretty versatile, you know, and I think versatility in your mechanics that are new to simplify things is good, especially because for a new player, they go, well, I hit the button, and the cinematics come on, and look at the lightning, bro, and it's sick. It's like I yeeted somebody off the stage because I hit B twice. I'm the Mm -hmm. sickest player ever, you know? They have something that feels rewarding that is very threatening, that is not easily accessible in general. Second stage, reversal edge, B, you're probably going to get beat out in your first stage because top-level players know what your best option is. Astroth finna K, then he finna B. You know, like, they know that flowchart. So because of that, they have answers to it. I think that's a good mechanic. I see very little harm in it. But I don't... I'm not, I'm not digging... I'm not digging this, uh, this decision. I don't know, like, of all games now. Every game's like, we're going to make it easier. It's like, for who? Who are you trying to get? A lot of it's in the name of accessibility and, you know, trying to get new players into the game. But again, it's like, it, it's the time old thing where it's like, well, now it's just easier for everyone who was already playing. And that's like, always been the biggest issue with simplifying these games. And I think there's in some ways, like, it's okay to simplify these games and say, remove certain aspects of the game when it's obviously not necessary and it's not going to impact the game very much. Like, my biggest example of this is weights and face up and face down wake up timings. Change and, that shit. Exert, they they removed shit. it entirely, right. and nope. I think that's like that's that's like one of the best decisions they made for Strive because that's just so that you can run your it. non-existent Oki on someone now. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> they took that shit out. Too. That's the thing, though. It's like Oki is still real as long as you have fifty meter, and meter does come back extremely fast in Strive. But like the the biggest problem here is that like it didn't necessarily make like Oki go away. Because you can't take away Okazemi from fighting games. I don't think you inherently just can, right? Even in Sam Show, there are levels of Okazemi. You know what I mean? A game that is considerably, con- like, it's considered simple and footsie based, you know, a very neutral, heavy game. But even then, there is Okazemi in that game. I don't think I mean, there's still, outright... like, have you ever played against Ukio? Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, well, you've been to learn what, what Okazemi is. He's, he's, he's crouching on your wake up. 
What's you mean to tell do? me that I'm in a 50-50 on every knockdown? And if I guess wrong, I'm actually being set played with mm -hmm. literal slide and <laughs> Subame every time. I'm going to mm -hmm. jump on wake up, Subame. I'm going <laughs> to stand up on wake up, slide. I'm dead. Mm -hmm. you, can't no, take Oki, you can't take Oki out of a fighting game entirely, but you can weaken it, which mm -hmm. is what they were going for because they're like, we want people to be able to play. It's like, we well, can't play if the damage is that high. <laughs> you can, yeah, you, know, you, don't, you don't get you a lot of playtime. Like, sure, you die. Like, the combos aren't long. So I think, like, a lot of things is when they were thinking of simplifying the combos, I think they were thinking about, well, wow, Ramothal's combos are so long in the mid-screen. Like, when she carries you all the way to the corner and Ramothal's just friggin', she's hitting you with 5D reset in the corner, and then she's setting up all these swords and everything, and it's like, the combo's going on for, like, good, like, 10 seconds, right? That's pretty long for a fighting game, you know? This combo is lasting a while, you know? But, I mean, think of, like, Marvel combos, right? Like, Marvel, it's like, those combos are long, dude. <laughs> those are so those long. combos are, like, they're, like, how do you say this? They're long in perspective, yeah. you know? Because, like, you get put in a corner, like, you're basically, every combo is going to kill you. If you're mm -hmm. put into a combo, you're going to die, probably. There's, like, very few B&Bs even without X Factor, that will just kill you. Mm -hmm. um, but they exist, and it's like, well, of course this is going to go super long time. But mm -hmm. it's like relative to the pace of the game, you know, you see Magneto just infiniting somebody on tack, like, mm -hmm. they're dead. Like, it's, yeah, it's you only... See a, the, you it's, see the hit, and you're like, well, that character's dead. So, ah, I should fight. <laughs> over and over, they're he's dead. Doing, he's doing the... Shoo, 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 like that, just in the yep. air, recently. yep same thing but no it's like i think what they were trying to go for was they were trying to say well i don't think players like the how out of control they are when they're getting hit right when they're getting hit they're like well i'm not playing the game because i'm just getting hit i think maybe they were thinking of it in that perspective but at the same time it's like that doesn't really change the fact that this is less play time overall because you're not playing the game because you're dead <laughs> so you're already in the next match and sure you're in the next match playing but for how long because you're going to get smacked with Fafnir and it's just going to kill you. You're going to get smacked with Fafnir and it's going to be counter hit and it's going to kill you. Because you were hitting a big counter, round a star, big counter. <laughs> huge counter, 1 8. You're dead. 1 8. 1 8, dude. <laughs> Off a command grab, by the way. That's 1 8. <laughs> Faust command grabs you. Faust command eight. grab, you already know. She's 18. 1 8. Uh, but no, I, I don't know. I like certain. That's the thing. It's like Arxis has had like a track record of like making pretty complicated games and lots of like games with. When I say complicated, I mean games with like lots of systems in it, right? That aren't explained well because that's inherently an issue of fighting games in general, but it's still an issue for Arxis, right? I think it's the biggest problem. Um, I think the biggest problem with it is specifically because anime games have a lot of mechanics and a lot of information that will be thrown at you on the screen. That mm -hmm. says, well, this is the way this character works. Hey, this guy's got baseballs. Like, hey, that guy got a strike. I'm like, wait a minute. Wait well, a minute. What does that mean in the context of what I'm what doing the hell literally does right that, now? Yeah, yeah, what what does that mean to me? He's got strikes? Come on, bro. Hold so on, you have got, all... So both of those squares are yellow, and then there's this one's white over here. And if he makes a home run, what happens then? Like, what, what's going... Like, yeah, that's... Shout out There's, to Jinpei. Shout so out to Jinpei. Yeah, shout out to the man. Shout out to You're the You're actually just playing baseball in a fighting the game. The first character I picked in that game, by the way, what as a, a new anime player. What a shame. Really bad. Really bad choice. Hold so on. You go, but you shout go... outs to the bink noise when you get clean hits. Yeah, he's really satisfying to watch because it's like when you watch someone who's good with that character, just... Like, mm. it's... They're, all, they're clean hits, by the way. He gets He's a clean hit character. So, once he's in Golden Bomber and he's got those clean hits, ooh. Ooh, it's, He's it's sexual. now. It's hold on, actually let's sexual. dial it back real quick. Who the hell knows what this dude's talking about right now? Yeah, actually, our uh, system anyway. works does this shit all the time. Every character has something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Now I'm not exempt from this because I play Soul Calibur, and that game is full of dumb shit, full of it. Well, he teched my command throw five times, so that means I get a lethal hit on six K. And that 6, 6k goes into a 50-50 immediately. Yo, Time I shot guess, you asshole. nine times? Your lethal hit. What do you mean I got yeah. shot nine times? Why are there roses on the screen? And what's happening? There's a lot of information, but Arc System Wars is really bad about, like, throwing a ton of mechanics and not really explaining anything and then going, enjoy. That, <laughs> that's not, um...
I think in the case to... of I think in the case of Guilty Gear, it's a really interesting scenario because like I've talked about this before with in, in you know in casual conversation with you guys. Um Daisuke kind of just puts in whatever he wants <laughs> into Guilty Gear. He's been known for doing that and just changing gear for whatever he wants at the time. This is the only time that they have put out surveys and said, hey, we want to listen to the fans and say, you know, what do you guys want for the game? You know, what should we change? What should we keep? This is kind of where we're going with this vision, right? I think where they're going with this vision is that they want the game to be simpler in the sense that Daisuke has gone on record saying and explicitly use Dragon Ball as an example of watching, hey, I watched Adult Gohan loop someone in the corner for nine years, right? I watched it happen. And I watched him as soon as he woke up, like out of the combo that took nine years, he was in Oki, right? For mm-hmm. nine years. So I want to make sure that doesn't happen. Hyper said, Chamber that. He said, I never want that for another game ever. Which is funny because when you look at characters like Milia, Elfelt, uh, what do you call it? Uh, <laughs> Relius, Carl. You look at all these crazy set play Oki characters. Arakune and Curse. Ar- yeah, like these characters that explicitly their point is to put you in the corner and make sure you never get to play the game and are in Oki for as long as you. And that's the thing, though. A lot of those characters, what they struggle with is neutral. You know, that's yeah, they're, like, they're neutral's they ass. That... But if they get the knockdown, it's time to party. Which it's is time to play, bro. But that's like that's I think something we've talked about before mm-hmm. is that. Milia exists, right? Uh-huh. And Elfelt exists, and all these characters that are like, "Oh, you got knocked down. It's my time to shine, bitch!" Like, no time, baby. <laughs> yes, I'll shine. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> you know, dude. It, yeah. It's it's that time for those characters. But I think that now, as I said before, and we've expressed, is that the games are becoming more homogenous. Where now everybody is waiting for for a knockdown, so they can run that game and they can do the same thing. That's why I think people think Street Fighter V is boring if they don't play it because Mm -hmm. that's the way it works. It's like, okay, well, I'm in the neutral. Strike throw mix up immediately. Somebody gets knocked down. I push them into the corner. All right, I'm going to shimmy. They're going to try to throw. I'm going to blow them up. I'm going to cross counter them. Knock down again, and you run that until they die. Every character feels that way, Mm -hmm. and I think – I mean, they can't really do that with gear. They can't take away that mentality. But if they dare, if they continue in the direction that it seems to be going, I think we're going to have another Street Fighter Five on our hands. Another homogenous we're- pile of characters that all kind of do the same thing. Mm-hmm. That's probably my biggest fear for gear, because that's like part of the reason that I dropped Street Fighter Five. I was really like. For those that don't know, I was really passionate about Street Fighter for a long time. It was actually the first fighting game that I, like, for real got into. And it's like, I played Street Fighter and I played Tekken. Those were the games that I played, and that's what I got into the FGC with, you know? Along with, I guess, if you want to count Smash way back in the day. But I don't. fighting games fighting games speak. <laughs> yeah, we don't. FGC, like, the what brought me in was Street Fighter, and specifically Street Fighter 4, Third Strike. Uh, and Tekken Tag 2 is my first Tekken, although I was really excited for Tekken 7. Um, hmm. which ended up being a really good thing in the beginning, you know? I really enjoyed Tekken 7 in the beginning. But uh, the the thing about, like, Guilty Gear and its identity is that you can't really remove all of these, you know... Like, part of the identity of Guilty Gear is that there's so many different characters that all function extremely different and kind of play their own games. Like, playing Slayer is a completely different fighting game than playing Sin. You know what I mean? It's completely different. Like your entire approach to, you know, matchups, uh, neutral, Oki, everything, everything that that character is is extremely different. And they all work within the confines of, you know, I have a health bar, you have a health bar, I have a tension gauge, you have a tension gauge. These I can are... RC, you can RC, we can have sex. But like, we can that's do the, crazy that's... different things with it. You know what I mean? The game is entirely different. The fact that, that... but like every character from, from my observation, watching mm-hmm. Guilty Gear, I'm like, this is sick. Look at this. This character, only this character does this thing. Mm-hmm. Why is there a, a reticle on the screen? <laughs> and it's like, oh, oh, she's got a gun. Like, <laughs> yeah. So all that's of, another thing, all though, of like, those. I, uh, I had talked about this at length earlier with a few different people. I talked about it with you specifically. I don't know if I had talked to NT about it as well. Uh, I think I had talked to Chris about it as well. I really, I was really burnt at first at the change to Soul's Command Grab. So 
he has a thing called wild throw for those that don't know soul has wild throw and it's a command grab and it always has been but it functioned different in the older games in the older games it was a combo starter it dealt no damage upon the throw itself so he would toss them to the ground they would bounce up for a combo and you would be able to combo them now you get to you get to style on them because you you wild through them let's Mm -hmm. see what you can do with it let's style and in some cases here's the thing since it is a hit right you have to hit them in order to deal any damage because it's a combo starter that's a burst point as well Mm -hmm. so now you get to style on someone because now you get to throw people's burst that opportunity is on the table so that's the thing though it's like it plays the 50 50 of okay well they can burst now now they can burst my combo now that's something that's added to the mental stack that i have to think about right now this in the context of let's let's not talk about simplicity here gear in that aspect is when it gets complicated you know you start having to think about more options and stuff now you look at strive and you look at wild throw and strive it's just a command grab all it is is it deals damage it's unburstable it's a command grab it does 30 percent that's a shit ton of damage damage. now now listen here pot buster does like 50 percent on chip about 40 ish percent little maybe a little bit more on regular characters because Chip, for those that don't know, have he has uh, less health or less defense than most characters. Um, Functionality-wise, Soul is looking like a better Potemkin. Because Soul, yeah, I was, is a I was, lot just, I was thinking about that. I'm like, you give a character a command grab that does a little less damage because you don't want to have to make them do the 30 year combo. Mm-hmm. You just want them to just do the damage, run the Elki. Soul is inherently a better neutral character yes. than Potemkin. Potemkin's neutral sucks. He's a grappler. Those that like, what do you mean? How's he getting in? That's up for him to decide. It's gonna take him a while. Maybe he gets there. Maybe he scoops you. If he scoops you, you die. But Soul, on the other hand, is in your shit the whole time. Mm-hmm. And now his strike throw mix up, <clears throat> Street Fighter Five, um, is strike or wild throw. <laughs> That's and really scary. On the flip side of all this, the thing that I want to point out is that most people aren't mad that Wild Throw does damage. People are mad Wild Throw can no longer benefit them in the screen. Before, if you were mid-screen and you wild through someone, you were taken to the corner. You were setting yourself to, to be advantageous, and you got a little bit of damage on top of it. Now, you just throw them to the ground, you get damage. You, you really don't benefit at all aside from straight up damage and Mm -hmm. on top of that a lot of people find the wild throw combo fun you take away their fun let me let me talk about specifically when i because this is the thing that concerned me the most about the change to wild throw when i found out about it i looked up i went straight to youtube the moment i found out about this wild throw change where it's just a command grab it's no longer it's no longer a combo starter. It doesn't just bounce them to the ground and let you combo. What I immediately did when I found out this information is I went to YouTube and I looked up wild throw combo video. And that exists. There are people out there who have made full on four to five minute combo videos just about one option that Soul has, you know? And that's like added to character diversity and like, you know, being able to express yourself with the character. There's lots of people out there who are known specifically for their character because they're like, uh marlin pie does the crazy hard combos with eno right he does the crazy hard stuff omito he does the crazy difficult shit but makes it look real makes johnny look really really easy and obviously top tier right but that's the thing though those are players that are known for doing those specific things when and this this brings me back to the street fighter 5 feeling of everyone is being able to you know do fafnir and do 60 percent right off fafnir starter or like I don't know, everyone throws wild, does wild throw, and it does 30%, you know? It detracts from the individuality that you get from playing these characters, which I, I think is one of the most interesting aspects of playing these games, because, like, when you look at people who play... <laughs> Seth in the chat, everyone talking about SFI. <laughs> but no, like, I think it's really interesting that when you look at, uh, specifically anime games, in my opinion, you get a lot of diversity with characters. You get to, you get these people who are known for that character. When you see that character, you think of these players. You know what and I mean? And you think of their play style specifically. Mm-hmm. Yes. Not just the fact that they're like, well, this guy does this. It's mm-hmm. this guy. I mean, this guy plays this character. It's this right. guy plays this character this way mm-hmm. with these options. 
hey, this guy, like you say, likes to IK every time. And his entire game plan is built around IKing people as much as possible, which is not Shout easy out. to do. Shout outs to the crate. That guy's, Old that guy's dope as hell. Great, dude. <laughs> the god. Engineered his entire game plan around insta killing. But again, like no Kai plays the same as Kizer Crate. And that's like one of the interesting things about like these games is that people can uh, you know, they can obviously just, you know, run the basic stuff, right? Like everyone can do like Soul can do 2D, you know, everyone's gonna do 2D, but is everyone gonna do 2D RC 2D into Wild Throw? <laughs> Yo, this... Have you ever seen that? No, oh, no. That's that's the classic. It, this was this was uh, Accent Core, by the way. This is old gear, but uh, Kusoru, which is Kuso Soul, so shit Soul. Um, he did in Grands 2D RC 2D RC into Wild Throw, and like I everyone mean... looks at that and goes, "Whoa." <laughs> like who does that what a nut you know what i mean and like, who just does if that? we're talking about soul my favorite kind of soul player at least an excerpt is the ones that always try it in di dragon install baby. every single one and like i don't not. care yo don't that's care not what in the game doing. anymore it's <laughs> not and i'm really they not, took it out like what they took it out but dragon install i don't care if the soul was dying if he dragged this, I'm like, yo, this is the greatest player ever. This guy's awesome. <laughs> this is sick. This game is great. No, but that's the thing. That's like <laughs> a funny story about Soul, actually. Every time I've ever seen a Soul mirror happen, if one does drag an install and the other, the other has, has to, to mirror, do it, they, ha they never back down. Never. I have never seen a set where two Souls are playing and one D like does drag an install and the other one doesn't do it in response. It's like challenging your manhood. It's like it's serious. It's serious. It's serious. yeah. Like, that's like the down. um. That's like down. the the Yu Yu Hakusho knife fight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know yeah, where you he's know got the, the knife in the dark <laughs> tournament, and it's like we're gonna stand on these blades. You can't back off. It'll cut your Achilles tendon, and we're just gonna punch each other in the face until one of us dies. Yeah, <laughs> you can't. That you cannot cannot. Back spoilers down. for Yu Yu Hakusho, but that's how it works. And that's like. There are those things that make those characters, those ways that bring out the best of what makes fighting games special and fun. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we're seeing less and less of that because they want to make things a little bit easier. Well, if we take out Dragon Install, it's, you know, Soul's a little bit easier to deal with. But we'll give him Wild Throw and he'll do a lot of damage. It's just like, what do you, what is your plan? You tell me. Arc system works. Justify this. I actually just thought of something really terrible for the viewer. I can no longer go AA with combos because combos are becoming less and less existent. No. Because that dude. has always been the hype. Aside. KOF 13 is the game that originally taught me that is hype because HD combos are hard and they last a while. So you ever get, hey, 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 every hey, every hey, single time with the hit. Sick, dude. The, the entire crowd is games, doing it. A A A. It was I mean, watching, dude, Ham, it was watching you and I strike, are... watching Yun, and he was he popped grenades in, and this is a whole bunch of people just going, hey, hey, hey. Like, you and I can share this. No, Kum Hayun, kick loops. Every hey, time he's a kick loop, yo, hey, so hey. Hey, oh man, like and it's on I'm chip. not gonna get that anymore. It's on chip, so it's he's on dead. Chip you, but that's the thing though, it's on chip. He's a known like low health character, but it still does enough A's to be hype. You know what I mean? Yep. It still yep. does enough. It doesn't kill him instantly. It's a slow burn. It's so yep. good. But it's you're, it, you're going A for a while, but it's like great. you get at least like three or four in there, and it's like this feels good. This feels right. You know what I mean? And that's I'm the thing, it's say... like the first time I ever had that experience was like I was new to the FGC and new to locals, but I was sitting there watching Heyoon just absolutely like dog on this chip. I think it was, uh, if I recall, it was Cha 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 and Samito. And Samito chips like considerably, like probably the best chip in Japan. And Cha 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 just a lot. out here looping. And I'm, I'm sitting here at locals watching this happen. And I'm like, dude, everyone's going. I like, I, I didn't have to think about it. I just went, Hey, 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 exactly. Like, it's you don't need to think about it. It's just the like first a time I saw can it, join in. The first time I saw that, immediately I went into YouTube and I typed in fighting games. Hey, like I wanted to hear more of that, and because it, it makes it special. It's so special, and you're 
what are you doing? <laughs> like, I'm not going A A A to Grand Blue. What no, am I? No one's A A A to Lancelot loops twice. Oh. No, hell no. Because you already know what you're getting out of that. Mm-hmm. But kick loops, man. Sex kick loops. loops. You get Souls Dust loops. I've seen people do A, but that's only in AC because, like, in AC, there's actually no combo limit to it sometimes. Yeah, you can do it like eight times, nine yeah, times. Yeah, you can actually do Dust loops like eight times in that game. In Exer, they lowered it a little bit, but, like, it's still there, right? Um, it's still, Dust loops actually still exist in Strive, but in a much uh, more homogenized way. Um, and that's in ultimately, like, the thing that I'm, like, I really want to want fight modern fighting games to avoid. And future ones as well. I think homogenous outcomes slash... And when I say homogenous outcomes, specifically... Sorry, Seth. I'm thinking about Street Fighter V V-Trigger comebacks. I'm thinking about that. That's a problem. Yeah. You look at we- Urian and he's got full VT and you're like, he's looking for the one crouch medium kick. He's going to do crouch medium kick mirror. like, <laughs> Or he's going to do target combo. He's going to do forward strong into forward fierce and it's the overhead and he's going to mirror. And it's like... And then he's going to charge up heavy kick. And you're going to get hit because you were holding down back. And then after that, he's going to do another combo and you're dead. It's yeah, yeah. And, like, you know what's interesting is if you talk to Street Fighter players, like, or if you watch interviews in the past of Street Fighter V players, they always say that. They're like, well, I already know what this character's going to do. They're going to do this, and then they're going to V-trigger activate, and then they're going to do this, and then they're going to kill. Like, they're going to kill me and I'm going to die. That's mm-hmm. the way it feels for them as players. That they know that ultimately the result is about the same. If you're a good character. Even look at St. Cola. He's a commentator. That man can call the pocket on almost any single round. He'll he'll say, this character is going to finish this round in this way. And they'll do it. He just recently did it with Mike Ross. Mike Ross said, St. Cola, how is this round going to end? Crouch me and you kick into super. 20 seconds later, it happened. Yo, that was tight though. But that but here's the problem. It wasn't the moment that was tight. It was St. Cola calling it because he knows. Because we already know. We know. We, I've had, uh what, what, how's that interesting to me? I've had that I actually had that interaction with you guys specifically. I think we were watching Evo last year, uh, and we were watching Undernight, and I went, watch. This hide is he's gonna CS and he's gonna DP. It's just gonna happen. You know what's gonna happen. And guess what he did? Four seconds later, I saw yep. the I saw the resources, and I was like, I know exactly what this guy's gonna do, and that's part of the reason that I'm not really a huge fan of Undernight because I feel like there's a lot of homogenous outcomes. You know, it's all gonna end up being kind of the same thing. Someone's gonna CS an overhead, and someone's gonna like DP CS or something. Like it's just, it's gonna happen, right? And it's kind of boring to watch. Like I, I don't, I think the the, insert, the uncertainty is like really interesting when it comes to spectator view and also in game as well. When you look at like Exert, you look at danger time, you see danger time and you're like, this is amazing. Yeah, like as a spectator, it's amazing. As a player, that's a character specific thing. Cause chip doesn't like danger time, but man does Slayer <laughs> like danger time. <laughs> you ever that's just tight. You ever just pile bunker a chip in danger time. And it just, yeah, dude, for, for those that are uninitiated, you ever just take 70% please off his life with one pile bunker. For those uninitiated, please watch. I believe it's Munchie Jr. versus Bears. I want to say he uh, he got one stand heavy uh, on Chip when he was airborne in Danger Time, and he killed him off of one. He TOD'd him. It was amazing. That it's sounds TOD'd. great. Send me the link, bro. I will. It's um, amazing. It's the moment. But that's the thing. It's like I think the added uncertainty it makes it really interesting to watch from a spectator view, and it also makes it really interesting because you feel more engaged in the game. When you're playing it too, it makes you want to think about it more and makes you want to, you know, enjoy it more. I know we strayed pretty far from the conversation of uh, um, simplicity in fighting games, but I feel ultimately simplicity, it can be brought back around because a lot of these changes, you know, to removing a lot of these things in the name of simplicity is ruining the things that we enjoy the most about these fighting games. Yeah. And like, I think that like, you know, something like, like V Trigger, for example, sorry, Seth, you got to hold that. Um, that's, uh, that's the, uh, unconventional volatility. That's like, I mean, that's like, that's like, uh, what do you call it? It's like forced volatility where they go, okay, well, this mechanic exists. So of course, (laughs) of course they're going to do this. And now they're scared. Like I, I was at CEO last year after doing commentary for my first time on a major, it was sick. 
Um, I was at CEO and I was listening to Logan talking to Problem X as they were discussing Street Fighter V. And as they were talking about it, this man is the Evo champion at the time. Or maybe it was one year off. Regardless, Evo champion. And he's talking to Logan, and he sounds so pissed. He's like, Street Fighter V is not a, it's so volatile. It's so volatile. Every time that you, I get touched one time, V-Trigger activation, and I die. Street Fighter V is not a good game. When you look at Mortal Kombat, and I, like, you know, he's got the thick accent. I'm going to move past it. But, you know, he goes, well, Mortal Kombat's better because the best player always wins. But people say that that game is boring. They think that that game is boring because people don't want cheap stuff in that game, so they simplify that too. So ultimately, like, who's winning here? When They're you strip all of these, when you strip all of those things away, who is actually the winner? Because the guy that just won damn Evo that year or the previous year hates it. He hates it. He doesn't like it. He was so upset. 801 Strider was standing there like this, looking swole as hell. And he's like, yeah, man, you're right. You're right. I'm just like, I mean, are you going to tell him he's wrong? He's the best. He knows the game. And he goes, this game is volatile, but in not in a way that I enjoy. And I was like, dude, that sucks. It sucks really bad that that's the way that that is. And I was like, that could never happen with other games. Mm, it already it did, is. though. It already, it already did. did. I, didn't, it, it, I, had, I didn't have the insight. You know, I didn't. I wasn't woke yet, bro. It wasn't there. FGC woke. Oh, mm. um, so I wasn't there yet. You know, I hadn't tapped into that mentality of starting to figure out that all of them are starting to seem kind of samey, where these mechanics exist for people to come back, for people to just shake up something, to watch people get okied into death. Like these things all seem very similar. And I didn't know until that moment, until I was like listening to Problem X, bitching to Logan about Street Fighter V after not winning CEO. I think the way that I want to bring this back around to my own personal feelings on it is that because of all this homogenization, we're not going to get the out of a left field random person coming in with thought to be bad character. The thing that comes to mind, which I know Christian will immediately understand, is Spark and Hakuman. Spark and Hakuman was one of the hypest things I've ever seen in, in my fighting game career. Spark came out of nowhere, started dogging every top player. They're like, what the hell's Who's going that? on? Yeah, dude. <laughs> this ha- a Hakuman is coming in and dogging top players? It's like, yeah, dude. Yeah. For known context, Hakuman is a counter character who has startup on his counters. Oh. <laughs> like, oh. heavy amounts of startup on his counters. Uh, it's the hardest reads? It's the yes. hardest reads character. It's yes. the character that's built off of hard reads. Aside from, obviously, the grappler. But, yes, of course. But the closest you're going to get to, I'm just going to make the hardest reads and capitalize off of it. That character is really hard to play. And considerably, like, weak in that aspect. Also, his movement is bad. His movement is bad as well. But, yeah. Oh, the like... IK is a counter? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, his Astral is a counter. Yes, it's a counter. Oh, no! Isn't it also a charge counter? Yes, it's a charge motion, too. It's a flash kick. <laughs> this sounds terrible. That sounds it's great. Counter. It's amazing when someone does it, though. You know what I mean? It's one of those things where it's like, now that everything's kind of homogenized, where like, I can see the aspect of in simplicity when people say like, oh, wow, you know, everyone's DP is two buttons, right? That kind of sucks because sometimes maybe that hard read is harder to do in certain aspects. You know what I mean? For certain characters. And that also kind of brings it back to the idea of, you know, simplifying inputs in general, like let's say the tech and electrics or something, you know, like that's something that, you know, maybe maybe shouldn't be touched in certain situations because mechanically it makes sense to keep it that way, you know? But I think in certain cases it's contextual. You know what I mean? Like certain games can do with it and certain games can't. Obviously tech and you shouldn't simplify those inputs, you know? Ever. But like actually you probably should never do Imagine that. King with... Uh... <laughs> If he had a two plus four uh, giant swing, yeah. Oh <laughs> God, easy, easy giant swings. Holy two shit. plus four giant swing, and then you have um, 
One easy plus tombstone? Two, yo, yo, easy tombstone. Easy Tijuana Twister. Easy Tijuana Twister. Easy rolling death cradle, but it's three throws, but it's it's a 50-50 between three plus four, two plus four, and one plus four. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> that's it. Like now you have dynamically changed the way that this character works because they're way easier in ways that you did not probably you didn't plan for. You can't change those. Those cannot change. Mm-hmm. Gear, you can't. You There's so little. If you want to make a game, uh, I'll say this. This is something that's coming across my mind. If you want to make a game that's easy for people, make a new game. Don't ruin our old games. Just with make your, a new game. Just make a new game. Put it or, 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 imagine this. Make the hard game that you're making accessible to the to the players who want to get into it so it can remain hard or make a new game. Because every time you strip away mechanics to make it easier for new players, you're just making the game worse. It sucks worse, like every time. Sure, variable wake-up timings is trash. They did make a new game. It's Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. Yeah, but that's yeah. the thing, though. Team Red didn't make that. Team Red didn't make that. That's not, you know, a love child of the people who love Guilty Gear. You know what I mean? It's an entirely different experience. But again, you know, they did, and it's a more simple experience. But again, like, I think I can I can attest to, I think better uh, ways to teach players how to do things is probably the best way to go. But at the same time, like, it's really difficult. That's another touchy thing because you, you have to do it in the perfect way. You know, you have to make it easy to learn things because pe- players don't already want to go out of their way to learn complicated things that they don't want to do because all players want to do is mash. They want to hit buttons, you know? That's simple as that. They just want to hit some buttons. That's why people love, like, things like Marvel versus Capcom, right? Casual players, if you look at the games that they love the most, they are allowed to mash in. You know what I mean? They're allowed to just hit buttons at a base level, and maybe defense isn't that crazy hard at the beginning, you know? It's like, oh, hold down back. And then you get hit with Crouching Light by Magneto and die at a high level. <laughs> he yeah. pops X-Factor and he just explodes. X-Factor is another thing that's pretty homogenous and is kind of actually a problem for that game. And that's a big con- issue with that game. But again, contextual things for this kind of thing. You know what I mean? But again, this... Actually, I feel I, like that game was a freak accident, to be honest. Like, I don't it, at all. Like, the way, that it, it, the way that it turned out, I don't think it could be replicated. Because, like... Yo, imagine, imagine us like if you take Marvel three and you move it to 2020, and would we would it would it be like, well, it's got the Street Fighter five problem where I get hit with crouching light straight into X Factor and I die. That game, it's somehow it's like a the that that game is special because it like Stockholm syndromed all of the players into thinking that shit was it was fine, but it was it wasn't fine. But you, we don't have that now. Now we just got, this has to be fair. This has to feel fair. And if there's going to be a shakeup, it's going to be a forced, a forced, sad comeback. I disagree with the sentiment of Marvel 3 is, I think, 100% planned out with how broken that game is. I think, I think the only thing that I, I would say is probably not planned out was the TAC Infinites. The Attack Infinites? I'd say, Attack Infinites, I'd say, were probably not planned. And I think almost everything else was planned. I think X-Factor being as busted as it was, was planned. I think, because, like, otherwise they wouldn't have added speed to it. Like, it speeds your character up, depending on the level of X-Factor. So it allows for more creativity with the combos and whatnot. I think the only thing that I could guess was not intentional was uh, intentional unblockables with assists. Like, um, what was it? Uh, Dante's... Jam session, I think is what oh, it was jam called. Session. Jam it's session. The, yeah, it's a big pillar, right? Yeah, the big pillar. Because yeah. as soon as you start blocking that, your character is forced to look whatever direction Dante is. So you jump over them, you now can't block. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, incoming mix up with jam session? Yo, yeah, man. And you have jam two missiles on you? It's oh, gross. Dude, please. Like, I'm, I'm in such a good mood because I'm thinking about it. Like, the, that game, as I say, I they engineered it to be like really messed up. But that was what made it fun. And there were so many characters that did so many different things. Do you remember Vanilla Marvel 3 when John Bond was a playable character? Oh. <laughs> and and Wesker level was top tier. See, at level 3 command grab, like, that was fun. Why can't they... Why, why, why are we straying away from, from that? 
it's a team game to be fair you know there's there's things yeah. you can't do in other games that you can do in that game that's the X thing Context contextually x factor is fine for it because at the same well it's not fine but it's like it's fine enough it's fine enough because it's a team game but if it wasn't no no one would have it no one would have ever had it you know what that'd I mean? be that'd be one of the most hated mechanics in all fighting games it still <laughs> it's kind like, of is though a lot of people don't like it yeah there's a lot of people that don't like it shout out to chris matrix for refusing to play marvel 3 <laughs> and then matrix. playing marvel 3 mm -hmm. at a wedding and then lying about it on, on a podcast with photo evidence See, there's that, photo okay. evidence that's that's the thing though when PR Rog level three Viscant with Tron at Evo 2011, that's what got me into MBC3. Those moments like that are important and need to be in fighting games like that because those are the things that actually get people into fighting games. You know what I mean? Like it's like you can't you can't create the moment. You can't force it. It has to it has to just happen. And if you like, you know, it's shitty because infiltration's infiltration, but that mm -hmm. Hakan pick, dude, that shit was crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody yeah. would have seen that coming. And that's like, what I was saying, like the, the Spark and Hakuman thing, you, yeah, you're not 100%. really going to get that anymore. No, you're it's really like not. It's, you, it's difficult. So like, I'm, I'm thinking about it from the perspective of looking at characters that like, they all kind of, they all kind of do that, right? They all mm -hmm. like, hey, these characters all do the same thing. Hey, here's the other side to that coin. Now that I'm thinking about it, if character that you play does not play the way the game plays, your character is bad. Alex. <laughs> like, Alex sucks. Alex doesn't play Street Fighter V. He just don't. Alex sucks. Astaroth doesn't play Soul Calibur. Astaroth sucks. Like, <laughs> he sucks. I love him. He's not great. And you take, like... Lancelot jumping all over the place. You can't anti air him for shit. Lancelot does not suck. He's in the mix. You're in the mix. Vasaraga, is he running the same game as a Gran or a Jita or a Lancelot or a, a what's her bit? Catalina? Is he playing the way they are playing? If they are, if it's like a flow chart, it's like, is your player character playing the way that the rest of the top level characters are? If yes, then proceed. If no, they are bottom tier or bad, or not as mm -hmm. strong. That's it. It's like a very short flow chart. Mm -hmm. If yes, do they have these situations that they can create? If yes, they are top tier. That's it. And it's like it doesn't. You're you're manufacturing bad characters like on purpose. And the thing that's craziest to me is that when the beta came out for Grand Blue Versus, people already we're like fairies op she's gonna come out op she's gonna be top tier she's still top tier to this day people yeah. called that in beta well that's sweet dude you know what's gonna be really good? good in strive yeah soul's gonna be mad good he's in gonna be mad good in strive i think pot's gonna be real strong i think kai's gonna be real good kai actually feels abusable right now with the current the current soul and kai specifically i think feel very abusable right now they have moves that like are too good that they can just keep doing over and over without any kind of repercussion. And I think that's that's another big issue. But that's that's going into game balance that I don't I don't want to talk about game yeah, balance. Game yet, balance. We're beta. gonna be here for another three hours. So. First of all, I don't want to talk about game balance. Second off, I don't want to talk about it game balance in betas because betas, generally speaking, will have stuff that will change, but they will still carry over a lot of the same similar stuff. Because when it's in beta, it means it's a lot closer to being done. You know. Yeah, dude, I'm so, I am really concerned. They're like, "Hey, we're taking this survey really seriously," but I, I'm, I'm like, I'm scared because like you just keep telling me the dice kid is just like riding on a motorcycle, He's smoking wild, weed, and going out. I'm giving really fuck. like, like he he actually doesn't care for like, bro. He made a fucking single player MOBA. He made Overture. He, they, when they got the rights to Guilty Gear back, they were like, "Yo." Let's not make a fighting game this time. Let's make a single player MOBA, bro. That's gonna be godlike. That's and gonna then, be a good idea. People and every, like those. And, and cue the fallout. Right, right here in the corner of the screen. Yep. Everyone Everybody disliked, disliked that. <laughs> like that's what that was. Like, and, and like that's the thing though. It's like Guilty Gear as a series is not new to big change. You know. Now this is in the context of a fighting game. Now though. You know what I mean? This is the first, like, really, really big change that Guilty Gear has ever had in terms of a fighting game. Aside from, I guess, Isuka. But 
we don't really talk about that because people don't like it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because here's what they did. They took the framework of Guilty Gear XX, you know, the one that everyone fell in love with originally, and they changed it drastically. And Exerd was actually a return to form. Exerd was, it came after Overture, and it was like, all right, we're going to make this a lot more like Axon Court, the one that everyone loves, you know? It's very close to that. It's not necessary. I mean, there are major differences. There's no FRCs. There's the RC system is almost entirely different. Um, but the general feel of the game still feels a lot like AC and what you love about Guilty Gear. This feels Strive feels much more different in that aspect, where it's like I'm still having fun with a lot of the stuff, but contextually, it could be a different game entirely. You know, it doesn't hold the same feeling that I've been feeling about Gear. Unless you have 50 meter with RC. Everything else about it feels way different, you know? And I mean, Guilty Gear, traditionally speaking, is also a very high damage game. But it's off of very contextual scenarios of counter hits and uh, positioning. And strong movement, strong defense, right? There's a lot of contextual, very specific things about it that make it really interesting. When all that kind of gets tossed out, its identity is lost. You know what I mean? The identity is probably the biggest scare right here with the with the current like strive climate is that to me it's missing a lot of the stuff that I really enjoy and a lot of people feel this way as well you know a lot of old heads feel very you know like lost in this game they're like not a huge fan of it because what I want out of it is guilty gear it's not really what they're getting but I, a lot I of this is in the name of simplicity which is I hard. don't I don't like it and I think that you know something that is to take note of uh, mm -hmm. This is like a just open your mind real quick, you know. Prepare yourself. They are removing defensive mechanics from fighting games at an incredible rate, and no one's saying anything about it, dude. And the games are that's what's making it homogenous as well, because mm -hmm. now it is the same game. What is my options here? Invincible you uppercut. Down. No, you it's, you rush them down because they don't have uppercuts. They don't have defense. They don't have uppercuts anymore. You took them. You knock them down. What? You rush them down. You knock them down again. You keep rushing them down. So you push them to the corner till they die. That's it. Yeah, it's like of course, of course, you're gonna run that game because defensive options have been taken away from you. You can't protect yourself anymore. You Yo, can't Blitz make defense cool. Anymore. Blitz isn't in the game anymore. Which, by the way, Blitz is a read. It's a read defensive mechanic, and it high blitz covers two options. Low blitz covers one, but. Most of the time, your opponent's going to be going for lows. You know, they want to open you up, but, but the that's like that they go in with something. And that's the thing. It's like it's like reads that will, you know, eventually make the game to a point where it's like, oh, that person made that read because he just felt it or knew that they were going to do that, and that was hype. But now that that defensive option is gone from the game, it makes it, you know, that much less interesting because that aspect is out entirely. Yeah, and it's like. Remember, NT, do you remember the Soul Calibur patch about four months oh. after the game came out? Where they when fucking they, nerfed GI? They nerfed GI. They're like, we just want you to get hit more, like, for free. And then everybody became Mina players. Like, like everyone was a gorilla. They're flying all over the screen, pogoing you on you and shit. And you're like, what do I do to protect myself here? If I GI enough, I'll get full comboed and die. The worst part about that patch, you were punished for using gi yeah if you G if you successfully gi you didn't get the guard meter back so then if you were gi'ing successfully you get guard cross and you die so who is that for but they took that mechanic out and it was potentially to increase the pace of the game i think that that's what they want they don't want they want fighting games to be quick they want that <laughs> fucking dopamine dude they don't want that that slow burn where they earn it they want it to mm -hmm. well you still earn it regardless you still earn it it's still earn but they want that quick shit they want the hit right now you like you're shooting up into your arm you're biting the rubber band and shit that's what they want Jeez. that's Man, what they is, want this is getting real bad i i used to tell my mom at least i'm not into drugs <laughs> yeah here we are here we are in the climate <laughs> of i'm gonna just fafnir your over and over again until i get that counter hit and it's Ooh, once it hits it the is. rush and, and then you get the busted. rush your eyes roll in the back of the head. You're in a vegetative state for the next combo. And you're like, oh, uh, uh. that's it. That's what they want. <laughs> that's what they want. Now, this is, my, this is my hot take. You know, this is my opinion. This is how I feel about it. They, they just strip the game of, like, defensive mechanics. They don't want you to be able to protect yourself. So the round ends in two seconds and it's over. Like, <laughs> that's it. That's what I think they're doing.
because that's what it seems like, you know? That's what yeah, it feels like a, to there's me. A, there's a trend of defensive options being removed from the game. And a lot of it, like you say, like, you feel like they're lying because there's, you're saying, well, I removed this defensive, op- this defensive option because it's in the name of simplicity. It's the name mm-hmm. of, you know, I don't want this player to have to worry about this because it's on the mental stack. Uh, but the issue is now you're, you're worrying way more about something else how you're going to protect yourself from this silverback that's just running up on you. And here's, you know what I, mean? I think my issue how did with it viewership. <laughs> <laughs> so back. back in Street Fighter 4, there were plenty of hype moments because they busted through defense. They opened him up. When you heard the words from the commentators, he opened him up. That was big. Now it's like, mm-hmm. all right, he got the hit. He found it. Yeah, he, he, he just had to press the enough buttons. He was looking for. He, he, it was gonna happen. It was just a matter of when. Yo, that's the crazy thing is that nobody says, with the exception of Goichi the God, they're just waiting for somebody to get hit. Now, I'm telling you, it's the dopamine. I figured, I solved it. They just, they want the crack. They want to get everybody addicted to crack. Fuck the way the game plays. We just want to watch people blow up. Every game is Marvel three. <laughs> every game is marvel 3 it's fun isn't it it's not fun i don't enjoy that it's i fun. even as a soul caliber player even as a soul caliber player it is homogenous because all of the top level players i mean all the top level players play about the same characters they don't play them very differently from one another with mm-hmm. the exception of you know i think jjj doesn't go for a certain set of roses versus sandman's roses versus um master cj's roses for Amy. But what does Amy have? She is she's got in your down. face. She's got good frames. She's got good supers. She's got everything. What does Aswell have? She's got good data, good buttons, good movement, good everything. What does Cassandra have? Good buttons, good rushdown, good in your face. Like any character you see that's top tier is all top tier for the same reasons. It's I, Christian, the I think same that's what you were saying. Thing. And it's like, what are they doing on Oki? You know, like they they all do the same thing. It's like they all run that same game. They're it's all really, they all have very strong Oki. See, it's interesting that you say that because it's like when I think of games that like have extremely strong characters and extremely like unbalanced, like crazy, just that is stupid. This character shouldn't have this. I think of games like Gear, because you think of like Elfelt. You think of fucking I don't know. Even Venom has gross stuff. You know, Venom has some really nasty stuff in Exert. There's like Johnny. He's got like practical unblockables in the corner. It's like you're dead, you know. <laughs> you just die. You're dead. That's it. I guess I'll. But shine. I think the like, I, I guess I'll shine. But I think here's here's the thing is that I don't disagree with that. But I think the way that they get there is different. Yeah, Every that's, one that's of them. That's what's interesting about it. It's not the. It's not exactly the same. It's not the same. Whereas. Every like you know, Soul Calibur hard knockdown. If you run in the game, you already know what it is. Hey, they're gonna they're gonna duck on wake up. I'm probably gonna three B them. Full combo knockdown. Do it again. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing over and over. And we know that as Soul Calibur players. And the only way out that we have is reversal edge of GI. At least we've got defenses options. At least we've got our DP. That's our DP. Soul Calibur DP DPs are two two eight eight parries and <laughs> reversal edge. Those are your ways out. I really, I really want, like, I want to stray away from dogging on certain games, but I have to have this last, like, comparison in terms of, like, how pressure gets started in a certain fighting game. And Street Fighter V, again, I'm sorry, <laughs> Seth, I keep dogging on it. But every character, every character is just going to sweep into V-Trigger activation. It's every character. And if it's not that, it's far-reaching fat normal into V-Trigger activation. So it's like Kami, Crouch Fierce, you know? Akuma, Crouch Fierce. Or for any, literally almost any character, pretty much every character. Sweep. Sweep. sweep you know, it's funny that you mentioned that because I myself am not a Street Fighter V player, but I did play in it like in a... Every, oh yeah, um, still going to Gunflame RC for sure. But what they do out of it is going to be different. Are they going to 6P? Are they going to low? Or are they going to wild throw you? Or are they going to air throw you? Or you're going to gold burst and they're going to throw your burst? What's Ryu or gonna, gonna do? Sit there and what is Ryu gonna? So here's my question: What's Ryu gonna do? Um, he's gonna dash up. He's gonna do sweep. 
If it hits, he might still V-trigger activation. If it gets blocked, he V-trigger activations. What's he going to do out of the block? You got two options. It's either going to be throw or strike. That's it. That's it. Or, 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 ambitious. He's going to backdash and bait out an EXDP. Oh, no, I'm not saying that's not still mix. My problem is the, like, flowchart of options is much smaller. It's much more homogenous because every character does that. Yeah, every everybody character, does that. Everybody, everybody does, does that. that. And if like they don't Mike do Yaru sat me down and went, you're playing Ryu in this tournament. How do you go? I mean, he's like, you're playing Ryu, right? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to throw fireballs. You're going to uppercut him when he jumps in because that's fundamentals. And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And he goes, all right, the second you get V-Trigger, you're going to dash up, sweep, uppercut, I mean, sweep into V-Trigger activation. And I, I can tell you right now that it's not, it's not just Street Fighter. Go look at Street Fighter 4. Look how... Um, what is not Cammy? DiCapri. Look how DiCapri okay. plays. Look how Evil Ryu plays. Look how Relento plays. Look how Cammy plays. Look how Elena plays. None of them do anything similar to each other. And I'll throw in Gen for fun. Look how Gen plays. Six characters. None of them play anywhere close to each other. Not even in the slightest. Have you I ever seen? It's... Have you ever seen? In your life, you watched anybody play DiCapri and then do that woom, 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 where she's like teleporting in front, which side, same side, left side, right side? Like, it's one move, and it's the mix. And she can do that. She's got hands. Like, she's, she's a diverse character, but ultimately she's just going for mixing the shit out of you. I and think, she's, she's Cammy, so she's class. I think my biggest issue here is, like, it's it's less of like the options being really really good and like you know being like really strong like that's not my issue here it's like the idea that every character is doing this the same way it's like the method of doing it is homogenous you know what i mean yes soul is going to gunflame rc but not every character is going to gunflame rc you know what i mean every yeah. character is going to sweep into activation i'm just saying yeah, bro. That's, like, that's how it's going to work like that's that's the, like that's that like the, that's the difference the problem that's my it's problem. like ultimately you get down to it and you're like what's going to happen here sweep into activation time to guess the guess right like, like he's at 30 percent. his opponent's at 70 he's at a major life deficit he's gonna immediately go into v trigger activation and it's just gonna be like yo I got to be in my best mode because that's your best mode, right? Like, you, like your character is at their best when they're in V-Trigger. So and Seth, like, you're actually just proving a point that everyone can use it. We don't want everyone to be able to use it. This should be specific to certain characters because that's how you're adding in the diversity. By simplifying it, you're saying, yes, everybody can use it. I don't want everybody to be able to use it. That's everybody boring. should achieve. Everybody should achieve what they want. Their not best everyone's form. IAD is not everyone's IAD is good. IAD distances are different, and travel speeds are different as well. So, like, it's like RC I don't, I stack. don't want people to get to the thing that they like to do the most the same way. That's ultimately what what we don't want. We just don't want people to get there. No, so I think I, I think we've run ourselves in, in circles enough. We can take Seth's bad arguments offline. Is there any final thoughts that you guys have on this particular topic that we haven't covered already? I think I've said uh, everything I need to say about specifically like simplicity and uh, how it is messing with the current climate of fighting games. Yeah, I got to get my tinfoil hat. Um... You know, I got to get that out there. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, me figuring out fighting games forever. Um, they're solved. Congratulations. <laughs> We're That's done really here, boys. Awesome. Fighting, yeah, games are, fighting games are over. Yo, but yeah, I think that's, so... <laughs> that's going to cover it for, for this week's episode of VX Saturdays. If you guys have any contributions, questions, or topics that you'd like to discuss with us, you can hit us up on Twitter at EX Saturdays or through our email at exsaturdays at gmail.com. We also have a channel in the Discord, EX Saturdays Feedback, that you can talk to us there, or just in the Discord in general. If you'd like to hit me up personally, you can find me on Twitter at nc1evolution or through my Twitch, also nc1evolution, but with an underscore. Uh, so you can find me at twitch.tv slash lkhamdams. I'm streaming Final Fantasy X, uh, my favorite game ever. Uh, poke your head into there. Follow, subscribe. I know if you got a Twitch card, please let me get the, <laughs> please, the please let me get that Twitch card. Um, 
And you can follow me on Twitter at HamHarder, where I generally retweet low kick stuff and then sometimes get mad at people for saying the N word uh, on Twitter. Damn. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <Damn. shout> out. <laughs> I forgot about that entirely. Dude. This is a heated conversation about fighting games, bro. It's got to. Yeah. It has to be talked about, but also that topic also needs to be talked about at some point. We'll get so, there. So, yeah, you guys will get there. Um, as you know, as always, I'm FNTR. Uh, I'm at FNTR9 on Twitter. Uh, I don't know. I kind of just post things every once in a while. I don't post anything too of value except for uh, alerts about stuff like EX Saturdays and Super Saturdays. Or sorry, not Super Saturdays. LKO, Low mm -hmm. Kick Online. Uh, which, by the way, I think it's week six now coming up, yes, which is indeed. available for sign up. Uh, dates? It is May first. Is it May first? Yeah, it's May first. May first will be the day. So, uh, if, if you do are... have schoolgirls back in rotation, mm -hmm. we got that coming through, and I think I'm better be toing that as well. I'm sure. Uh, Body. Schoolgirls. Yes. Dude, schoolgirls is sweet. It's really easy to. No, run. he said. No, he said. Uh, he said schoolgirls. He didn't say schoolgirls. But yeah, uh, I I actually, now this. that I have this camera, uh, I may be streaming soon as well. So keep posted on that. I believe I'm also just FNTR on Twitch, if I recall. Man, he doesn't even know his own name. Hey, man, I never stream like that. But either way, uh, that's been me. I don't have much much else to add to the conversation. So All I could say is May 1st is LKO Week 6. The signups are available now. They close off at 5 o'clock on Friday may 1st so sign up now also be sure to tune in for it because every bracket has been phenomenal we got four games running so four streams for you to watch mm -hmm. all friday and if you are unavailable you can always catch us again here saturday morning ex saturdays next saturday may 2nd most of all you guys have been great thanks for watching we'll catch you on friday marvel 3 is the best fighting game Damn.